everybody and welcome to Resonance Arcade. This is our fifth show and today we're talking about annoyances in games, things that really piss us off, basically. Um, today I'm joined by uh, Lou, Steve and Sam, as always. Unfortunately, we haven't got a video with Sam today. Um, we just got his voice. His lovely... He's in the land before broadband. Yes, his <laughs> lovely dulcet tones you should be hearing, but hopefully he won't drop out. We've had a few connection issues, but other than that, it's gone all right so far. We've been, uh, we've been pretty professional today. And I'll stop mentioning it when we start getting into a flow where, <laughs> where it doesn't actually, it isn't a major part of the show, major part of the entertainment. Um, quick, as I do every week, quick parental advisory, we do swear in this show. We try not to, but it just <laughs> comes out. It's, un, it's, just, it's unfortunate. And, you swear uh, so much, Chris. I do, I do swear. Way Potty too much. mouth. Uh, the, uh, the what would your mother think? You <laughs> um, That's who taught him. Yeah. Right, so... Um, <laughs> Before we before we start, um, I just want to get some pimping in there. Unfortunately, this week we we couldn't uh, do the shows that we we're intending to do. We were intending to do some live game streams as well on Monday and Friday, but everything's went wrong. I mean, I've, my PC's been up in the air, and I've been I've had it to bits and everything and uh, all kinds of stuff. But yeah, so basically, uh, hopefully this Friday we should be bringing some multiplayer to you. Um, hopefully, both Steve and Lou are up for it. Uh, we're going to be hopefully probably. Fingers crossed, maybe, possibly doing Planet Explorers, maybe? Hopefully. That'll be a laugh. Yeah, so we're we'll getting, getting killed by 20 foot aliens. No, just me. Just you. <laughs> just me. Um, it's more then, like me. And then on Monday, me and Sam are currently attempting to sort out the technicalities surrounding doing like a single player stream so Sam can comment on the stream while I while I play. But unfortunately, we're having a few issues as anyone who's tried to stream that kind of thing, especially with you're not being in the same room it's quite complicated but we're trying and we'll see how far we get with it basically um so yeah today's uh, today's subject is about um game annoyances um we've uh, we've mentioned a fair few in the in the last couple of shows to be honest so this is kind of a consolidation of uh, of everything uh into into a nice neat two hour show so Let's start. In fact, I, you know what? I want to just want to just quickly mention um, some of the games that I've been playing this week. Um, I know we weren't going to do like a big bit on this, but let's. I'm just gonna just gonna tell you. Um, why have they annoyed you? Is that why you want to talk about them? One of them has. <laughs> <They're> both, <laughs> well, one of them's annoyed Lou. Um, one of, in fact, one of them in particular. We were trying to stream on Friday, and um, we were trying to stream Rainbow Six Vegas Two, which Sam, you'll be aware of yeah. at least, because we, uh, I was saying to, to Lou how much fun we had playing it when we played it on the 360. Um, it was, it's good in the same room, but unfortunately, all online, it's like there's so many bugs and issues with it. Um, one in particular was a sound loop bug that you were getting. Yeah. And I, I've got it on the 360 before, but I wasn't getting it while we were playing, so it was it was really annoying that we couldn't... Essentially, every time someone fired a gun, and that happened a lot in a game where the objective was to shoot people with guns, <laughs> um, the, the noise was repeating over and over until the end of the map. So yeah. by, the, by like halfway through the map, every single gun noise was repeating over and over. I couldn't hear a thing. It was awful. And all of the, all of the that... things that we looked at online, all of the solutions were basically uh, black magic. It was, no, it was it like, was, you know, yeah. disabled hardware Reboot, reboot your grand's PC and yeah. turn three <laughs> times and touch wood. Um, but so unfortunately, we didn't get a streamer, and plus my PC was exploding, hence why I've had to do a reinstall recently. <laughs> but yes, so... Um, uh, yes, yeah, so I was. That, that was one of the games I was going to mention. Actually, the other game was um, Shadowrun Returns: Dragonfall, um, which is the DLC for Shadowrun Returns. It's been out for a good while now, but I'm going to go straight into an annoyance with it. Actually, because it's a great game. I love the Shadowrun games. I, I love the original SNES one. I love the the Shadowrun Returns game that was done by Rival Theory. I think is it Rival Theory? They're the guys that do that Rain AI thing. Um, that I use in my de in my game development. Um, anyway, so yeah, um, it, one of the annoyances in that game is it's great. The story's really interesting, <coughs> but <coughs> excuse me, but there's so much text. There's so much text that it just it, and you can't skip it or anything. You know, you can click through it quickly, but there's no option to make it a bit more interesting, like the story and the dialogue. There's no voice acting. There's no um, well, there's no animation or anything like that. It's just you seeing someone's image, and 
it's a little bit annoying that I can't, you know, I can't. There's no, there's no better way that they could present it. I mean, I know it's an indie game. It sounds old school. It sounds like how Japanese RPGs traditionally did it. Yeah, pretty much. But the, I mean, there's reams and reams and reams of text, though. It's, it's. There's a lot of detail surrounding the story. Um, but yeah, I mean, apart from that, I'm really enjoying it. I love the turn-based combat element of it, and I love the, uh, I love all the different uses of spells and guns and different abilities you get, etc. And yeah, it's, it's quite cool. I've never played that. I'm just looking at some screenshots now on Google, and beautiful it looks really game. nice. Yeah. yeah, it is a beautiful looking game. Is it like grid based, the same as yeah. like, yeah. like the old XCOM? Yeah. yeah. It's a bit. Um, it's a little bit funny how you how you can select grids. Like if there's a character in front of you, and you want to get to the grid right behind it, it's sometimes you you can't quite get there. You have to be pixel perfect on like getting between the character's arm and his head or something. You know. Yeah. Um, but I mean, apart from that, I've had a few issues. I think actually, I might have saved on a bug at the moment. Um, the I've I've paid someone some money as I, as was part of the uh, the story, and and nothing's happened. So I'm just kind of sat there waiting. And I've looked. I've just spoke to everybody that I can. I've went everywhere that I can. It's only a, like a small contained area. Um, so yeah, it's kind of. If, if I'd had a few problems with some other DLC that I did with it as well, and it was uh, I had same things, bugs that were just showstoppers, and you couldn't get any further with it. Anyway, well, that's actually one of my annoyances I've got listed. So, well, that's cool. Well, moving on to that, uh, there we go. We see <coughs> see um, Sam drop out <laughs> the first oh, time. Dear. Hopefully, it won't break the uh, the screens too much. You can see this uh, this thing below me. But um, yeah, apart from that, it should should be good as long as he comes back. Anyway, um, yeah, moving on then. So, what what was that, was that annoyance you just mentioned then? Um, well, one of the annoyances I've got is something called soft locks, which is where a game progression suddenly gets confused and stops progressing. So you get stuck behind a locked door because you can't work out what to do. It's not so much that you can't work out what to do, but the game has not fulfilled the criteria to let you go on. Because it's done something in the wrong way, and it happens. It happens quite a lot in games, um, and it's it's horrible when it happens because it doesn't let you know that it's happened. There's mm. no way of knowing. It's just you think that you'll spend two or three hours running around going, "What do I do now? Do I talk to everyone? Do I look here? Do I look there? Do, what do I do?" Mm. And it turns out you don't do anything. The game is just soft locked. A similar um, sort of thing happened to me on um, I, um, what's it called again? An Acronox. Um, right. That rings bells in Acronox. Uh, it was uh, the RPG that was by Iron Storm, yeah. Um, and it was quite a big RPG. Uh, and I remember getting like really, really far into it. Um, and then just not being able to do anything. I tried for ages and ages, checked on online forums, and then come to the conclusion that it had been a soft lock. But I didn't have the heart to restart the game. I've never heard of that term before. Um, soft lock. Soft lock. Yeah. It's, uh, it's common in speedrunning. Because ah, if right, it, happen, right. it happens in the speed run, you know, you're halfway through a really good speed run and the game soft locks, then ah, and it happens a lot in speed run because speed runners go so fast through a game that they can get ahead of the game, and the game doesn't know what to do anymore. Yeah. So it's quite common there. Is it? <clears throat> is it one of these things that happens more often now, as games become a bit more complicated? Um. And score because there's well games these days. There's a lot of side quests, a lot of side missions you got to fulfill. Yeah, the, the more the more criteria there are for progressing the game, the more likely it is a soft lock. And it's just about good QA, really. It's just about them testing the game well or being very thorough with the way they program it. Chris, you're looking around like uh, yeah. some <laughs> spooky eminence in the room. The uh, the video that I'm showing at the moment is. Um... What that that one you just mentioned, an Acronox or whatever, a, a, uh, an Acronox. Acronox. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a great. It was a fantastic game at, looking game at the time. <laughs> at the time, maybe, yeah. But when then it was again, released. You, you said that um, uh, oh, Soldier of Fortune was good looking at the time. It was <laughs> at the time, but now it's not. So <laughs> it looks interesting, though. The game, into this, the environment looks interesting. I never even knew that this game existed. I'm sure you played it because we were talking There's, about um, Land before years ago. A it's guy in the chat. Sorry, go on. I was just going to say it's basically a big alien world um, that's completely mechanized that humans have kind of populated, and they're using it as like a, almost like a junction to get to other parts of space because you can travel fast and light through it. And it's just surrounding this uh, this detective that's kind of fell down on his luck. But the um, like the power development on it, uh, where you um, 
where we could improve your special abilities was really, really complicated for games at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, 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 do you guys keep talking? I'm just talking uh, some technical stuff. A guy, TSAG, in chat has just said that he, um, in Half-Life, he fell off a moving platform, but somehow survived. But then he couldn't get back to his original location, and that's <laughs> a perfect example. The game should kill you if you fall off that kind of platform. Mm. And if it doesn't, for some reason, if you miss the kill area or whatever, then, then yeah, you've got a soft lock. You can't do anything. You're stuck, but you're still able to move. And it's it's really bad because it's not like the game just locking up. It's the game is letting you move like it's supposed to be working, but it isn't. So it's uh yeah, it's an it's annoyance. Many an hour has been spent wondering what the hell I need to do next. I need to realise <laughs> that there is nothing to do. Yeah. <coughs> so there's any games in particular that uh that you've found are bad for that or? Um. In terms of soft lock, I mean there is. I can't think of any off the top of my head. It's normally actually situations like what's been mentioned in the chat. It's normally me being a dick, jumping around somewhere that I shouldn't be jumping around, falling off and then getting stuck. Getting stuck. Yeah. Um, there was a situation when we were playing Borderlands 2 um, where there was a door that was meant to up. Basically, you'd walk up to a door and these enemies would come out from behind the door and kick your ass or try to. Um, but the, the trigger didn't work, so we'd run up to the door and no one would come out and we just... We just wandered around for ages wondering, how do we open this door? And it turned out we just <coughs> couldn't do it because the trigger was broken. <laughs> nice. I've, I've had that a few times in games myself. Um, I can't think of any specific examples right now. But, you know, I've... You know, I've, do you not think that like games like... Um, like Portal, the original Portal, that felt like it was going... It was broken. Like you had that situation constantly. Yeah, it was a couple of times when you're thinking... I've tried every option here. Surely there's something wrong with the game, but then getting a little eureka moment and like, yeah, that was silly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just that, that's the kind of puzzle aspect. There's a game, um, probably most of you know about Hexen. Yeah. Um, yeah. A really old Doom Engine game. Uh, and that had some really difficult puzzles in it. Not difficult as in mind bend, but difficult, difficult as in there was these large maps, all interconnected maps, and you had to find a certain thing or press a certain hidden switch somewhere in a different part of the, a different level to open a door and I, I got stuck loads in that game and I'd like ex ex explore every room and try every button and switch everything and walk everywhere and so that leads me briefly on to like an, a, another bug that I have and, and I, I can even give games with examples of why I hate it um, so again, <laughs> hate's such a strong word I, Chris I, I hate this kind of bug it's especially in games like this game that I'm gonna mention right bugs where you you get stuck on scenery and, you, and oh. invisible scenery or stuff that shouldn't be there, invisible walls. That, invisible you know, walls. Anything like that. Now, I'm specifically talking about Assassin's Creed 3. Now, that game was so full. I don't know if it's been patched since because I played it pretty much when it came out and I played it for a couple of weeks and completed it. Um, but it was just full. You're supposed to be able to free run through the forest. You're supposed to be able to free run over the rooftops. It's supposed to be free run. It's supposed to be like... but. Like when you're holding onto the eaves of a uh, of a house and you're trying to pull yourself up and there's nothing there stopping you, but there's something within the engine somewhere that stopped and you and you have to and especially if you're getting chased by guards or there's a or you're doing a um, doing a mission that's time based or something like it's like oh my god I could have done that better. It <laughs> you kicks know? you completely out of the the whole sort of immersion of the game as well, isn't it? Like, you, you think you found a clever way to escape the guards and then you run into an invisible wall. It's like, oh, okay, then I'm playing a game yeah, and, and a crap one at that. And that's the thing. It's like, I've, I've had it so many times where you, sh you, what, you run up to a, a, a little rock formation. It's about this high off the ground. And you do a wall run all the way up it. Like, and <laughs> you, you're, you're invisible. Like, you're just you're doing that. Up the, just, oh. and that, that. I can't forgive that. And it makes me never want to buy another Assassin's Creed again. Um, I personally bought Assassin's Creed 4 because I'm a sucker. Um, and I really like it, actually. But it's still got those bugs in it. Not as many. That, that's got weird bugs where like the sea turns into a giant hole and stuff, isn't it? Or they've been fixed now. I didn't I remember see when, that. Is that Black Flag? Assassin's Creed 4? Black Flag, that's yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember seeing screenshots of it where there's like there's a ship in the middle of the harbour with a massive like waterfall underneath it where the water's just disappeared. Uh, <laughs> it's all kinds of crazy stuff. I didn't see any bugs like that. I have seen bugs like that in big games like GTA, uh, for example, where mm. GTA 4, no, 5 specifically. Um, right, I'm going to have to, unfortunately, kick you, Sam. You're back okay. now? 
because <laughs> you can when if you whenever you join it it buggers up all of the stuff so anyway it's, say bye to everyone sam because uh unfortunately you, <laughs> this isn't any good <laughs> no that's fine bye bye <laughs> see you later sam <laughs> see you later sam sorry sam was coming back and forth and any the, all the screens are messing up hence why i was trying to concentrate on what was uh going on on my screens anyway sorry about that guys so yeah we haven't got sam up there in the top right uh, at all and hopefully his internet will get sorted soon we still um, have his list though so we do still yeah have his yeah list, we'll, we'll, we'll go through some other stuff on his list and really sorry sam I, I, you, you're yeah unfortunately just <laughs> we, can't, we can't be doing with that um yeah, so I mean, I've seen that in lots of games, not just Assassin's Creed. I've seen it in in all kinds of games where there's there's just an invisible wall, and it, even if it's not a bug, even if it's intended to be there, I think invisible walls are an annoyance to me. Or yeah. boxes, you know, like um, uh, you get to the edge of the map, and there's and then suddenly all of the all of the mountains will be uh, thousand know, feet high. Yeah, oh yeah, and they'll yeah. just and they'll just be a box around the level. You know, it's really the boundary lazy mountains. Design. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, uh, there's a certain bit in Borderlands, um, the Arid Wastelands, where when you're driving around in one of the vehicles from the catch a ride, um, there's a little tiny bit of uh, like debris on the ground, and it can't be any higher than probably about five inches from the ground. But if you try and drive over that, you come to a dead stop every time. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And I find that sort of thing happens in a lot of open world games, GTA especially. You can be cruising around and you'd be mounting curbs, bouncing over things and you come to like a tiny pothole or a tiny feature within the the, um, the road or on the sidewalk and it, you just come to a complete halt mm. and it does kind of, it, 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 it takes you out of that kind of I mean, uh, immersion. I, I have seen it again, yeah, in Borderlands I remember, I, it might be the thing, same thing you're talking about but yeah, you're driving the, the car and it just suddenly stops or it suddenly hits something and then flips and you're yeah. like, oh, I just hit a pebble. I know my dad said <laughs> don't hit pebbles when you're on your bike, you know, when you're on your <laughs> push bike, because you might fall off, right? But not in a game. I don't want that level of realism, <laughs> you know? <clears throat> Plus, I didn't do backflips uh, on my bike. You tried, though. <laughs> I did do a front flip once off it, but yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think... Mean, there's a lot of games that suffer from that and I think when it comes to games like Assassin's Creed 3 for example there was a number of routes that I had to take between two cities and I decide sorry guys I decided to um, to run them instead of fast travel them because I needed I wanted to do all of the stuff in the, the frontier um, the problem being I bet that's Sam you know telling me sorry sorry probably is um, the problem is, is those routes are quite common routes. Everyone would use them, and it's like it's not like when you're testing, you wouldn't have tested it. So why is it being missed? Why is this there every time I go past this? You know, I've, I've hit the same thing three or four times, and even in huge worlds like that. I mean, to 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 play devil's advocate here a little bit and to side with the developers, it is very hard to do that, especially as you start to make an up more increasingly open world game. You can't test every single route. Uh, and you can't uh, test every single possible cost possibility. There's so many possibilities to test. One thing that um, that kind of, I don't know, uh, from a big business point of view, I'm sure that as these games get closer to release dates, they'll have issue lists, and the issue lists will be a mile long. And I'm of the opinion that the majority of the time, in order to achieve a deadline, they'll say, right, we can only knock off the top 50% of these issues, or whatever. Oh, yeah. What yeah. are the worst ones? And it's it's bad because they're selling an unfinished product and they're still charging the same amount. Mm. Yeah, that, that's and an annoyance in itself, isn't it? Yeah, no, I mean, that's down as one of my bugbears. Then you've got those... The, I think this is all going to kind of mesh into one, I think. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> there's not really going to be a list here. But then you've got the same thing from AAA developers when they, when they refuse to fix a bug. Mm. Because the game's too old or something like that. But even if even if everyone was complaining about it at the time, and I'm talking about specifically this Rainbow Six bug that we were having, this sound loop, I got it on the 360. I got it. Um, Lou got it on the PC. Loads of other people have got it across <coughs> across all of the consoles and and everything that it was on. So it's a game bug. It's not a specific hardware issue. It should have been fixed by all rights when the game came out. But because the game was good, people kind of forgave it and they. You know, they, they kept going with it. Yeah. Certainly and then you're at a point where I was going to say, then you're at a point where the companies have already got, they've already achieved what they wanted to achieve. They got the sales, so they're not interested yep. anymore. That's, All about that's yeah. That's yeah. I mean, with series like that, with big producers, I don't want to name any names, but I think everyone knows who the main culprits are. 
it's a case of let's we need to get this game out so we can get the team on the next game. Well, and we I... can't afford to let that team spend the next few months patching the game. I am gonna name some names. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, Red and dots appearing on your head? It seems to be consistent across the board that Ubisoft they their Q and A is utterly terrible. Not just oh. the Q and A, but they're also the after sales support. They don't care. They're a bit massive corporation. They've got what three studios across the world? Four studios? More than that, way more. Well, anyway, they've got. I thought they just had a couple of big ones and sort of a little. They got a couple of big ones, but they have loads of smaller ones as well. Right, fair enough. So they've got hundreds of studios, let's say, whatever, <laughs> tens, twenties, whatever. Um, but the problem is, is that they don't have enough resource to do this. They don't have. <clears> they don't. Even though even though the game was Q and A tested to a level that was releasable, they still don't. There's no after sales there, and people and people are constantly complaining that they're spending forty or fifty quid on a game and then getting half the product. You know. Yeah, and that is um, the age of the internet, the age of patching. That's something that is a, a valid tactic for companies to use: is to to get a game to what would traditionally be a beta state. Release it and patch it. I mean, they they can release games now, like Grand Theft Auto Five, when it came out with no multiplayer, and it was like, uh, yeah, sorry guys, we'll put it in in a couple of months. Like, well, that's not going to do. I mean, it turned out that the multiplayer was one of the biggest things in GTA Five. A lot of people, myself included, haven't even bothered playing it simply because it wasn't ready when we were playing the game for real. Yeah, and like, we've moved on to something else. Since yeah, then. exactly. Yeah. I'm sure it's a great game, but I can't be bothered going back to it now. Sorry, which game was that? Grand Theft Auto Five. Yeah, I, yeah, it is a great game, by the way, and it is worth. It, oh, it is a great game, but it's a multiplayer. Great, I don't know. I don't, I've never played it. I never exactly. Tried it. No, no, I, I, exactly. I loaded it up actually. I remember I was on my PS3. I think it was PS3, wasn't it? They came out on first. Yeah. Came on Xbox, Xbox 360 and PS3. 360 and PS3. Yeah. And I loaded it up. I did all of the configuration stuff you have to do for the for the player, and then it failed to load. It just it just wouldn't. I couldn't get past the loading screen to get into the actual game, and then I never tried it again. So I spent like half an hour setting things up, and then never tried it. And that's that's their fault. <laughs> I mean, there was uh, when it came out. Obviously, it was very exciting. to Start playing the single player game with the hope that all these added features were coming. I mean, there was going to be um, an app as well um, that you could use to get in-game bonuses. When it was released, that was only available on iPhone. Uh, yeah, yeah, I heard that. Yeah, and I had I yeah. only have Android, and I was like, I want to play iFruit, or whatever it was called. Yeah, because yeah. apparently you could it, it give your character certain bonuses, and you, you could, could get more money for dog it, and, and things like that, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah, precisely. And but that just wasn't available through and the multiplayer through my entire playthrough of GTA Five. And it's a big game; it's a lot of time invested. Not something you could just repeat and repeat. I've got to say, I'm an iPhone user, and I didn't bother with that stuff. To be honest, I can't be bothered. You said messing you haven't played GTA Five. No, I haven't played the multiplayer. I've completed the single-player game, but right, I completed right, it right, well right. before the multiplayer was even ready. Yeah, yeah. Same it took here. them two months or something to get the multiplayer ready. Uh, see, in this day and age, I think the problem with that is that particular model is most of these companies go have pre pre-orders anyway. Uh, most of the big games have huge pre-orders, so they know what the sales are going to be, or they roughly know what the sales are going to be. If you don't pre, I mean. I, I'm not pre-ordering anything ever again unless it's a game that I really love, you know, I'd, I'd probably... In fact, no, you know what, I'm probably not even going to um, pre-order the like, next MGS because it'll, I'll be able to get it at some point and yeah, I'm what's that the busy. Yeah, I'm that busy, what's the point? Yeah, I might as well wait for it to come down in price a little bit. That's what I tend to be doing now, it's like instead of stacking the games up, I'm not yeah, being sensible about it, you know. I've, I've already got that much of a back catalogue to play. That, yeah, and, unless it's something absolutely like, ground breakingly amazing that's going to come out it's going to go at the back of the queue or somewhere yeah. towards there anyway. I, I've, I've been burned, I mean I pre-ordered uh, Thief, I got it as a uh, birthday present actually, I didn't pre-order it but, but the person who bought me it pre-ordered it and what a disappointment Yeah it is I, I, you, know what, you know what did it for me, it was, um, it was pre-ordering and getting the enhanced edition or whatever it was of uh, Assassin's Creed 3 because I got I was like, this is this is going to have trees in it. You're going to be able to swing around, and you're going to be able to shoot people and garrot people. And you could do all that, but there was so many bugs in it. Um, it just wasn't. It, 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 it's made me think. It's just made me rethink the amount of money that I spend on games. Even though it's my hobby and I enjoy spending money on it, and I don't mind spending sixty to seventy, eighty quid or whatever on an enhanced edition. If you really, if you really want what's in it, go for it. But 
you know, I mean, I got a, a Bat Batman Arkham Asylum um, limited edition one, and it had a really cool figure in it. Um, and, but you know, Steve, I, Steve does that as well. You you get a lot of limited edition stuff. You got that um, Halo thing with the Master Chief's helmet, haven't you? Yeah. Is it yeah. Halo that, Two, Halo Three? That kind um, of stuff's cool. There was Halo Three. Um, yeah. Again, what a letdown. Didn't people try and get the head in that that, that thing? Not realizing. Well, it's it only got a little helmet. slot. <laughs> <laughs> you could probably disassemble it, but it doesn't look big enough for uh, a human head anyway. I could go and grab it, but then I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd disappear off camera for a second. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, better not do that. <laughs> um, right, let's move on to the next one uh, on the list, and this is what what we've Lou and I have both got a definite bugbears about this. I'm not sure about you so much, Steve, but uh, it's it's changing the cool emergent mechanics that that develop that gamers develop like that yeah. part, they're, they're, even though they're, they're playing a game and that mechanic is there even if it's a bug it's still emergent it's still it's still enhanced the game and i'm talking about things like bunny hopping in quake um yeah. i'm talking about the skiing in skiing. tribes yeah. even like the the circle jumps and things like that in quake and all the other games and there's 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 every game has probably got some kind of emergent mechanic in it in some any way shape game. or form yeah well any yeah all right <laughs> um but yeah, I mean, it's um, changing that. Sorry, I hadn't, I hadn't quite finished. <laughs> uh, it was changing. It was changing that into a specific function within the game. So within a, in a sequel. So making uh, make uh, like adding the ski button in tribes, adding a bunny hop button in Quake Live, like they've just announced a few weeks ago. Yeah, that's all. Lose post see, on that. I can see the point of acknowledging things like that. I I. I I've spent more hours than I care to to admit to perfecting movement in certain games like Quake and Quake 2. Um, and I can see why, if they were going to release another Quake game, they'd have to have those same mechanics in there. But those mechanics didn't come about because someone decided, wouldn't it be cool if they fired a rocket at the floor and went higher? They didn't think if someone pressed the jump button and move in a certain way, they'll move faster. These are things that come out from bad programming. Simple as that. Yeah. Someone got the maths wrong. Or loose pro, uh, you know, maybe not bad. I wouldn't. I wouldn't no, really... it's bad. Well, okay, not bad, but but the maths was wrong, and it caused things to happen that shouldn't have happened. Um, but then to actually say, yeah, well, we we meant to do that all along. In fact, we made it so they can press a button, do it automatically now. It's like that's not honouring this this mechanic. That's saying, yes, we're brilliant. We put that mechanic in, and now we want to make it accessible to everyone. We Defeating in... the point, they, they don't understand why the why that mechanic was so good in the first place. It was so good because it was something you had to learn, not something that you can just press a button to do. We we live in an age of convenience. Um, that that's what I'm putting it down to. The fact that people expect things to be done for them. Now, personally. And, and I think this especially rings true if you're talking about competition play or you're talking about any kind of professional play on any level. Practice is where the skill comes from because if you've got a button that does all of the crazy cool stuff, everybody can do the crazy cool stuff and it's no longer a special skill or no, no longer uh, uh, an advantage to you in, in that game. You know, uh, but everyone knows how to do a rocket jump in Quake 2 when the you know when we used to play it, everyone knew how to do one. You still had to perfect it to get it right. Oh you still, yeah. You still had to know how to do it and be able to time it correctly and have all your settings in the right way to do it. You know? Yeah, it wasn't a sure thing. Um, and the better you were, the more likely you were to pull it off. It I'm wasn't surprised. a case of it wasn't a case of leveling up uh, rocket jumping so that if you if you did it enough, you automatically got it right every time. That's that's not. That's not rewarding people for for practicing a game, and there's there, there are certain joys in gaming. There, there's a joy of of being awarded things, you know, the loot sort of thing. There's there's a joy of of defeating something that is difficult, and there's a joy of learning to be so good at the mechanics that that you feel like you're actually progressing, mm. and feel like you're progressing because you're doing something skillful. It's almost like a craft. It's like, um, I, I, I take an example of um, that Divinity Original Sin that I was playing a while back. Um, have you either of you guys played it yet? Play very it briefly. Bit. Now, mm. it's not 100% my type of game. Uh, it's very, very complicated, and it's very, um, uh, it's very based on knowing the game inside and out till you can get good at it. 
now that to me is uh, the more you play it the better you get at it but with things like the emergent mechanics you can actually spend time learning a specific mechanic because uh, for example i could rocket jump like anybody i could grenade jump like anybody you know r super rocket jump or whatever you call it um but as soon as it came to the circle jumps in in the edge now I, could, I, could, I did them a couple of times and I, I couldn't believe it and, and instantly lost the information that I needed to return to be able to do them. Uh, double jumps, things like that, I could do a little bit, but I wasn't skillful at all, but I chose to, ch you know, I chose to... Yeah, you hone your skills to a yeah. certain yeah. area, which suit you more tactically. Yeah. I, th I, th I think the problem with them kind of making these emergent mechanics mainstream within the game is to try to level the playing field too much. Exactly. And they're trying to make it so everyone's got a chance, and you know everyone. Well, it's 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 not about that because certain people excel at certain things, and that's where tactics come in. Yeah. If if everyone's got the same kit and can do exactly the same thing, you're in a stalemate position. It's down to the look of the draw. Well, you're in you're in a you're in a almost you're in a professional sports situation. You're in a situation like on um, maybe not Formula One, but. Um, in professional sports where everyone is right at the top of the game to the point where the only th difference is when someone makes a mistake. In a game of snooker, as soon as someone misses a shot, that's it, the game's over for them pretty much. The, mm. Everyone is at such a high level that it is about mistakes rather than about skill. Yeah, the thing with games though is that you haven't got pe a, a hell of a lot of people that are at the top of the game. You've got a very wide spread. And exactly, what they're trying to do is to, to try and level that. It just makes it massively unfair for people. You've got people who invest a lot of time in a game to learn skills that now it's completely like, negated because someone's made a button that does it for you. Exactly. I mean, that, it's like what I just said there. It's basically putting everyone at the top end of the skill yeah. tree. It's throwing everyone so in the there's, there's no movement anymore. There's, there's, it, it, yeah. it doesn't work. You need a bell curve. There's, there's got to be an well, even distribution. You need that because of all the different types of gamers out there as well. You've got you've got different yeah. types of professional gamers. You've got professional gamers that take it uber seriously and practice day in and day out. And you've got other professional gamers that are more casual and they're more about the showmanship. And then there's other ones that just like to play it's, games. You know, yeah. I, it's well, well, I, I, I might not want to practice for hours and hours and hours a week. I might not get to the number one, but. I'll still know one or two skills, you know? And you'll yeah. enjoy it while you're doing it? Yeah. You will, yeah. And, and I can understand that if you play a game and, like, I, I tried to play Battlefield 3 and I kind of enjoyed it, but it was it's a very hard game anyway. And it's a game where everyone is very good at it. Same mm -hmm. with Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Everyone is very good at that game. You go on a server, you're just going to get shot to shit. Yeah, I hate Over and that. over. Now, that's that's another one of my bugbears, actually. Um, the, the, I'm thinking of games like C uh, CS, and I'm thinking of games like um, Call of Duty, where everybody's been playing it so much that they've leveled themselves up to a point. They've been reward. Ah, th in fact, this is entirely contrary <laughs> to our to what we were just talking about. They've leveled themselves up to this prestige level, and like they've got all the weapons and they've got all of the skills and everything, and they can customize a character a hundred million different ways. Uh, and I mean, apart from being told by a mate, right, use the use that particular shotgun because that's more powerful and has a less spread than some of the. There's no real skill involved in it, is there? It's it's just. Well, there they, is. There's all the skill that they've. Yeah, there's all the skill that they've accrued from playing it. But but okay. there's a problem. The problem with games like Call of Duty, and I, I haven't played Call of Duty, so I'm going to put that on the table right now. I don't really know much about it, but I do know that the more you play it, the more you level your character up, the better weapons you get. And other, you get other perks. That's, now that to that's me, my problem. That's it. Yeah. That 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 to me seems counterintuitive to the fact that someone's getting better at the game, and the game is in addition giving them better tools to play with. That is like doubling up. Right. On that that problem. My problem with that, with Call of Duty specifically for its uh, its model, um, is that I, as a casual gamer these days. I am still quite good at those games, you know. I'm still quite, I'm still quite good at FPS games in general because I play a lot of them. But when I join a Call of Duty server, I get trounced within a second because they've got better weapons, because they've got better accessories and all this other stuff. Not because they're particularly better at aiming than me. Yeah. I'm sure there's some of that as well because I don't play it as much and I don't know the maps as well. But there's still, the, it's it's more about how much you've got, you know, how much money you. It's this is this back to yeah. the free to play stuff, you know, that kind of. It's it's if you if you pay for something or you pay with your time, which time which I don't have. That's why games like Quake, when you used to jump into it, and everyone had the same playing field, 
the same access to the same levels and the weapons, and it was fair, apart from the more time you spent, the better you got at the game, you know? It's not, <laughs> yeah. just, about, it's not just about building your infantry. Yeah, I think I think that it's almost like game games have, have, have ended this arms race where they're trying to reward people, and they're trying to reward people with better toys to play with. And what the what the what they don't seem to have realised yet is that you can't do that within a multiplayer environment, it's not legitimately, because people are learning to get better at the game and they're getting the tools to get better at the game at the same time. It doesn't work. It means that people grow exponentially in power when they're playing the game. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, going back to your, uh, your snooker example, it's like, you know, someone who's been playing snooker for 50 years comes in with, like, you know, a, a queue with a laser sight, <laughs> and you've got someone who's just started playing snooker has got, like, a twig. It's <laughs> a twiglet. <laughs> you're playing the same game, and if, if, if it's a competition, I mean, competitive sports have been going on for eons. And there's always been one standard rule. Everyone's on a level playing field. Exactly. That's how competitions work. Yeah. It's a test of skill. Everyone's got the same equipment or has access to the same equipment. Fair enough, you can train more. You've got natural ability that plays a part in it, but you sh everyone should start off. I think if on... um, I think if, if you do if you had a I mean I'd, I've never seen a Call of Duty competition so I don't know what they're like but I imagine if they had a Call of Duty competition everyone would be given access to everything the same. I don't think that it would be Everyone's very mothers would be offended. But then again, those same people were probably, even if they couldn't do it that way and there wasn't a custom server involved or anything like that, it would still probably be a case of those people have probably got access to everything anyway by this point because they've been mm. playing it for so much. But I don't know, I think it's a bit um, it's a bit stingy of the developers as well to, to expect us to put so much time into their game, into a single game, considering there's so many others out there. I mean, I want, I, these days, I want quick campaigns. I want six hours, 30 hours maybe at the most, you know? Yeah. And and I'm happy, unless, the, again, a game like Ground Zeroes, GTA, or uh, Skyrim. Skyrim comes out. You know, the, the, that kind of game I can I can engross myself in. I was um, I was reading an article uh, a few months ago, and I've just remembered it now, otherwise I would have uh, linked into it, because it's, um, it is quite topical. And it's about, um, like, video games and the subliminal reward systems that they use in order to keep gamers on there and Call of Duty is a perfect example if Call of Duty didn't have this level progression you wouldn't have as many people playing it for as long but they keep you hooked because it's like mm. oh I've, I've only got another so much XP to get to this level until I unlock the Claymore yeah, yeah whatever. something like that and it, it's all about just trying to keep you hooked at a subliminal level by mm. this constant reward structure I don't even think it's that subliminal. I think it's pretty blatant, in fact. Well, it's blatant I, because it, it's it is blatant, blatant, but I don't think people realise it. And I don't I, think I, a lot of people care either. Yeah. It's like a drug problem, you know. It's the same kind of thing. If you want, if you want drugs, or you're addicted to food, or you know, whatever it is, it's it's an addiction of some sort, and it, it plays on the the human psyche, <laughs> the human condition, essentially. And the more you do it, the more reward you need in order to get that level of uh, gratification again. <laughs> yeah. And now I think maybe this, maybe this. Two syringes um, full instead. <laughs> maybe this, maybe this. Uh, One at each eye. <laughs> maybe this segues quite nicely into the pay to win, pay to play stuff, because that that seems to be the way that they've approached it. Is okay. So we don't want people to spend loads of time grinding this equipment. Let's let them pay for it. Let's give, let them give us sixty nine pence, and we give them a new weapon. But and that is compounding it's, the issue. It's always a small amount as well, usually, unless yeah, it's something. Like unless it's like buying loads of gems. I I can say from first-hand experience, and I'm sure you can as well, Lou, from the pirates thing that you did on yeah. Facebook for a while. I spent maybe seventy, eighty quid. I can't even remember what it was now on gems on uh, Kingdoms of Camelot, uh, yeah. which is a mobile game, and that 70 quid went on 1500 gems or whatever it was and those 1500 gems disappeared pretty quickly but before that point before I actually made that decision to, to buy 1500 gems at once I hadn't bought a single thing and I'd, I'd been putting it off for ages but there is lots of opportunities there's lots of opportunities to say right here you go that you're gonna, you can have three gems special offer for 60p or something and it's easy to do that because 60p, 60p. You know, I've got you know, I've got 60p lying around in the house somewhere. I can do that, but it's not that. It it adds up and it adds up and it adds up, and you just end up with a fortune spent on it without knowing about it. 
I've got to say, I've got to put my foot down. I've got to say that if you're a developer and you do this, you are ruining your game. You, you are, are absolutely evil, ruining wrong, your game and you because are a cock. here's why. Um, if you do this, you make the situation unstable. You may, it makes it so that even if you offer a tiny reward for one pence, everyone will have to have that reward in order to be at the same level. But yep. what Steve was talking about, the, the whole point of competitive play is that you all play at the same level. If someone can pay for something and that increases their level, even by 1%, everyone yep. has to be in, in there every as well. other industry, they call that cheating. Yeah. yeah, and it's it is that it's it. You're right again. I mean, when I played Kings of Camelot, I, for example, had four million might, and that's a lot of might in that game. I had a massive army. I had like four cities. It was or maybe not more than four million might, but anyway, I had I had loads, and I'd done that without spending anything. And then I started getting attacked by some of the high, the higher guilds, and my guild were like pretty high on the in, in the charts, but the, I mean, it was second or third or something. But there's hundreds of guilds on this server, and the ones that are above us and slightly below us decided to gang up on us. And at that point, it was like, right, I'm just getting trounced. I can't... Th these guys have got 500 million might or something ridiculous, like utterly atrocious. And it's because they'd kept buying these um, chests for like a pound, or these mystery chests. Yeah. And they open them, and sometimes they get good rewards, sometimes they don't. But usually it's they get 5,000 units or something, so they can have 5,000 more people in their army. And they've got the, they know the game mechanics so well that they um, they, they, they just sit there with no food in any of the cities and they don't need to pe uh, actually feed any of the troops and they just build up humongous armies because they just keep ploughing money into it. Yeah. I, the guild leader in my clan, she was spending a thousand pounds a month on gems. A thousand pounds a month on gems. She didn't work and she just played this game. I don't know how she got that money. I have no idea and I'm not even going to speculate. But beside the <laughs> point, you know, it's beside the point, it's still like, Jesus, I know, I know the argument is I'm enjoying myself. That's the argument. I'm enjoying myself and it's my money to spend. I understand that. But in terms of the type of games that they are and the type of people that they attract, it's not what I would call serious gamers. One thing that I would actually like to know um, on these pay to play, I, I, I point blank refuse to pay to win on any game. Mm -hmm. I've completely stopped playing mobile games because of that very reason, because it's just saturated. Yep. But, but of the people who do uh, pay to win, is it satisfying? Is it really satisfying it's to satisfying. know that you've just put some money in and yes, you're a higher level, so yes, you can win? I would say that the amount of Candy Crush people that are out there, the amount of people who play Candy Crush and will pay to unlock the next level or to, to get extra help when defeating the levels shows that people are getting satisfaction from it. Is it it's satisfying not or is it addictive? It's, it's, yeah, it's not the same satisfaction. It is a different kind of satisfaction. It's the satisfaction of owning everything. It's the satisfaction of collecting. It's the same kind of satisfaction you get from having a collection, from collecting football stickers or think something like that. It's having the complete set. Or how, knowing that there's something that you haven't unlocked. That's but to Chris's point, kind. though, when he was playing um, that game where he got trounced by all the other empires. Kingdoms of Camelot. Kingdoms of Camelot. Um, surely they didn't get anything for that. No, they, they And they if didn't. you're spending like, a thousand pound a month on something where you've actually got nothing to show for it, and you've Correct. spent a thousand pound a month, and all it takes is someone to spend one thousand one hundred pound a month. And yeah. they will beat you. Not necessarily. There was also well, a lot of time you had to spend and you had to monitor your castles and all that. You have to basically have no job and loads of money to win that game. <laughs> so well, I, which I, is quite a unique combination. Yeah, it's yeah. for housewives, basically, for people, you I, know, that don't... Or house husbands. Or house I played husbands. A, <laughs> I played a game on Facebook called Battle Pirates, um, and I kept an Excel spreadsheet of all the money that I'd spent on it getting... Uh, uh, extra resources and coins and stuff like that. It turned out I'd spent about 260, 270 pounds on the game when I finished playing it, and I was still nowhere near the level of other people. Mm -hmm. So these people were putting way more money than I was into the game, and it just made me think I'd never spent that much money on any game, even subscription based MMOs. I would not have spent in two and a half years that much money. On something like EverQuest. No. <laughs> and, and so, you think about it, it's not. It, it's easier it to manage over over a number of months. You know the the amount of money that goes out. It's easier to manage over a extended period of time. But it it's still as as Steve said to me, it's the satisfaction you get from it at the end that's the important thing. And I I don't get the same satisfaction from those games. 
Me neither, and that's why I stopped playing, because I realised that I was, one, not getting any satisfaction, two, not making use of the fact that I feel like I'm a pretty decent per- person at playing games, and there was people who really weren't that good at playing games who were beating me purely because they were spending more money on it. Yep. And that makes you think, is this a game or is this some kind of financial dick measuring competition? But that, yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> it, it's a lot, it's a lot yeah. to do with um, leaderboards and that, in, that, in those games. Everybody constantly talked about the top 10 or the top one or two people on the server or the top, serv- um, the top guilds or, you know, uh, with every day they had like a daily competition and it was like, this is a great way. This is one of the... It, Fuck me. Sorry. I just had a thought about another th- another thing that annoyed me in that game. They had daily competitions. Quite often they'd have, right, attack um, attack a particular tile on the map, and whoever attacks this tile the most or spends so much might on it, might is how many troops you've got in that game, so one troop might be one might or whatever. The more people, and basically whenever you sent your troops to this tile, they all got destroyed, and and... Everybody just kept, I mean, everyone on the server, I didn't do it, but everyone who wanted to participate sent every single thing that they had to it. Uh, the, the, the better the unit, the more might it costs, so, and the more money it costs to buy as well, some of them. So you'd just send all of your, your entire army to this tile, it'd get wiped out. There was, no, there was <coughs> nothing coming back apart from one, positions one, two, and three got a, an extra item for the day. Yeah. And it was a mint item, don't get me wrong, it was a really good item for the game, but it wasn't worth the amount of might you had to spend to get yeah. there. And that's just another tactic, it's another marketing tactic to get you to spend more money, because you have to recruit them troops somehow. Yeah. It's, and as um, far as a marketing <laughs> tactic goes, it's a fantastic one. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course it is. I mean, you, they you wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't working. <laughs> no, no, so you, you make a nice, simple game that's quite addictive, you get people hooked on it, and then you start charging them minimal fees, which... Then, you know, people's machismo steps in and I want to be one. I want to be number one. I want to be number one. It there's goes a, up. Yeah, there's a golden combination, isn't there? There's competitive play and pay to win. Mm. The combination of the two, well, sorry, three things as well, addictivity. If you've got those three things, you've got the recipe for success. Um, so, so where are we putting the fault then? Are we putting the fault with the developers or are we putting the fault with the gamers for actually uh, enabling that's the, the thing? The only, the only way, and this is another call to action I'm afraid guys, the only way for us to stop this is by you guys, the, the, the public, the people, the gamers, the people who are actually buying these things, to stop buying, stop pre-ordering, stop buying um, gems, stop, stop Stop buying pre-alphas. Stop buying the things that are crap in the world. And I'm not saying every, every <laughs> single one of them is crap, but the problem is, is me, um, what's the word? Uh, the mediocrity kind of perpetuates itself. You know, it kind of, it, it, yeah, if, if, if everybody say, if, if we as consumers say, this is okay, this is fine, I'm happy buying 1,500 gems uh, for $80 or whatever it was a mo- uh, every couple of days to keep up with the rest of them, then companies are going st- to are going to still survive in, o- in order for them to actually produce more games of the same ilk. And yeah. other developers will jump on board with that. You've got I've a got lot of people say- working in the market now that are looking, right, what is making this company money? This particular one, why is it making money? Because people are paying day in, day out of place, right? Let's make more of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, it, it's, 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 a, it's a situation that you can't dispel, unfortunately. You can, call, you can say, let's have a call to action. Let's all stop doing this immediately. But it's an unstable situation. It only takes one person to, to actually pay for something, and everyone will have to follow. It's a stack of cards, yeah. and there is nothing you can do about it. It's the same as you know, petrol prices are going up. Everyone stop buying petrol. Well, okay, I need petrol because my wife's that pregnant. Do, that does work, and that has worked a few times. <laughs> it hasn't worked. It's, it's dropped the prices by a few pence, but if we kept doing the it... Threat, the threat of it has, but it, it doesn't work. With it, the, the petrol thing, well, all you've got to do is embargo one manufacturer. Yeah. They'll be forced to drop their prices, and then the others will have to follow suit. Yeah. Someone, Wait, I, I kept getting emails about you know, yeah, embargo, embargo. Don't buy BP Shell or, or yeah, BP or whatever. whatever. Yeah. But there's already, I mean, the companies that made these games, like um, Rovio, who made, is no, no, King.com, who made, um, Candy Crush. who made Candy Crush, are really struggling at the moment. The uh, they said the CEO has struggling. just quit. No, they are seriously struggling. They're, they're not. No, they're not. No, they're no not. okay, they're not struggling in the terms of they're not making money, but they're, they're, they haven't got a stable plan. 
they've made a lot of money and now they don't know they, they, they don't uh, they don't understand a... how to right, you, know, you know what I, perpetuate that success these, these companies king.com rovio all that kind of thing they've all came from zynga they've all come from humble beginnings and mm -hmm. they've forgotten themselves that's the problem they've forgotten themselves and they've ended up worse than some of the triple a places because they are they are literally just stealing money out of people's pockets for no <laughs> they, they, okay maybe not literally and i'm sorry i'm not i'm not one of those people who uses that word lightly normally he literally never uses they it literally never use that <laughs> word <laughs> no they are they're taking money out of people's pockets for for essentially trash the games are, are but they're just the same thing rehashed in with a new skin on it. Can well, I was going to say, the game, when they come from humble beginnings, does that mean they've copied all the epic games? Yeah. Uh, then uh, Candy Crush is columns. Columns. Yeah, 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 basically. It's a match three game. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a whole series of games. But it's not exactly columns, but basically it's columns. It's the same threes. mechanic behind it. Threes, um, isn't it? There's, there's, is it threes bubble, fours, which, five. Bubble, which saga, which is basically... Um, it's uh, a that puzzle, one. puzzle bubble. Dr. Yeah, puzzle Robotnik's... No, Beam Puzzle Bobble is. Oh, yeah, okay. uh, but Beam, Beam Machine was another one that's kind of like Candy Crush because you can make shapes and make them fours or fives or get supercells yeah. and. The, the the type of the type of game is called a match three. It's a it's a yeah. that's the genre is match but three. I've, I've had this conversation with plenty of people who aren't who what you'd probably call very light casual gamers and they're like, oh, I'll do this that. I think no, it's just a copy. You're paying someone for somebody else's work that was done like decades ago. If you want to play a what you call a match three game. Yeah, there's any amount of them available. There's emulators there you can and play all games. Yeah, they're all yeah, free. You don't have to pay for easiest, this. That's the easiest one to get hold of. But again, I come back to the point that it's the age of convenience. Yeah, and everybody wants things on their mobile phone. And I tell you what, I've been I I play Candy Crush every day while I'm sat on the loo because it's easy to to play while I'm having a poo. Simple as that. Do you do you post you your start first? You black man. No, I don't. I don't post <laughs> anything that I do. I used to play um, Farmville for a little bit as well, and I'm sorry, guys. I, I shouldn't probably have admitted that to you two, but uh, oh. <laughs> I, I played turn, it. Turn around. Farm I, turn around. I, I yeah, you it. go away. Shave the beard off. I played it because Sal is addicted to it, my wife, and oh, she was addicted to it many, many years ago, and she. Um, and she got really, she got a really big farm. She's like, look, I'm doing this. I'm growing some crops, and it takes me eight days to grow this one, and two days and two hours to do this. And I get loads of money. I said, well, what do you get from this though? Well, you can visit other people's farms, and right, what do you get though from it? Well, and do you know what? She quit. She quit because it was too much maintenance, and it was taking over her life. It's a farm. Yeah, <laughs> that's what Get farmers up at six do. In the you, morning. Know, you know what she does now? She plants actual vegetables outside. Waits a little bit longer than eight hours for beetroot. To... Does she throw throw throwing coins and stuff at them to make them grow faster? <laughs> stuck, a, stuck a sign in the floor. Yeah. Now, um, I that that's, actually that's... it links me to uh, an element of gaming that's starting to come through now. It hasn't really affected me that much because I've been ignoring it, but it's starting to get to the point where I can't ignore it. And that's the social aspect of games. Mm. Okay. Um, like Facebook games have been bad for a few years. You know, so and so's invited you to go and visit their farm or have your bollocks. But uh, there's been quite a few games now that have been the likes of the 3DS, where you've got to use a thing called uh, Street Pass. In order to progress in the game, you've actually got to pass somebody with a Nintendo 3DS, and they've got hotspots. So in order to progress, you've actually got to one of these hotspots, walk around for a bit, meet people. And then you can progress the game. I, I don't want that. I want to play games because I want to be on my own. Sounds suspicious like Grinder. I'm a little <laughs> bit like that. <laughs> I do not know what Grinder is. Yeah. Google it afterwards. Oh, okay. <laughs> so just, just, it'll be right up your street, Chris. Yeah. Is it, is it an, yeah. like Big an like image you. and a link type thing? No. Right, okay. <laughs> um, I, I've forgotten what Steve said then. I was actually. It's like the forced social aspect of some games. Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, it, it ought to progress. You have got to tell your friends about this and uh, invite them to play. And there are a lot of there are a lot of AAA games that are starting to do that as well now and yeah. starting to incorporate social aspects. There's a few Nintendo e are going like hell for leather with it. A Nintendo e are a social brand, though, aren't they? Well, they tried it with the Wii. They weren't a social brand until the Wii came out, and it was actually um, I forget his name now. The C uh, the new CEO of Nintendo actually made a press statement last week. Saying that they're they're completely going to forget about casual gamers and go back to hardcore gamers because casual gamers are not worth it. 
Satoru Iwata. Say that again, Nintendo said that. Uh, yeah, the CEO of Nintendo made a press release last Satoru week. And Iwata. Iwata. Fantastic. Thank you, Nintendo. Right, you know what? Right. I, I don't care what anyone says. Nintendo are one of the, in my eyes, they're one of the least evil corporations on the planet. Only because that they, they constantly innovate and they constantly try and improve the, the experience for the, the, the majority of the gamer market, you know. And, and they're always, they're not the best at things. As I've said this before, they're not the best at things, but they're really good at inventing things and coming up with ideas like yeah. the Rumble Packs, for example. And well, when's the last time that you had a Nintendo game that you bought and thought, this is a beta game. This is in a beta phase. Oh, Nintendo uh, games have. Nintendo just make the same game. They've been making they the same fucking game for the last 30 years. Right. Over and over and over and over but again. They're That's always very polished. Yeah, because it's the same game. <sighs> Gaming you know, annoyance, I... Nintendo. Full All stop. Right. I, I know, I know, I know. You, Sam would be on your side if Sam was still here because he, he's an avid Nintendo. Not hater, but he, you know, he's not keen on them. Uh, I, I said I grew up with them. I know what you mean. I know that they've been creating the same game, but you know what? I'm looking forward to the next Zelda more than I'm looking forward to most games, and I'm yeah. not including Metal Gear Solid in that list. Um, I'm going to buy a Wii U purely to play the new Zelda. I, I, as will I. That's the only reason I bought a Wii is because I wanted to play Skyward Sword. And I got, I've got Twilight one or two Princess. other games. And, and I enjoyed uh, what was it? Brawl. Um, Super Smash Brothers Brawl. That's quite a good fun... <laughs> I played the game with Sam quite a lot, and it was quite a good game to, to get into. But the, the point is, I know where you're coming from, Lou. I know that it's the same story rehashed. but they the same never, gameplay. They, no, it isn't. It is. No, it isn't. The Mario it? games. The Mario games are always the same Mario games. The how, Mario is, oh, every, of how many have you played? Have, uh, how many, how was how Mario 64 the same as Mario Galaxy? How, how many have you played all the way through? None of them. Well, shut your like fucking Nintendo. face, then. <laughs> Shut your fucking face. Shave that daft soul patch off, you don't deserve that. Right. I'm not saying you can't comment on a game if you haven't, com you know, haven't... I normally don't do that, but the reason I don't like Nintendo is because I feel like the... The, the games, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to annoy a lot of people, I think the games are very much aimed at children. They, they used to be, and some of and, the... But, but they, they're still mm, aimed no, at actually, the same... No, I'll take that back. No, the, the, the thing is, they're aimed at children, and the, those children grow up and still want the same nostalgia value. So they want to play the same games that they played when they were kids on modern machines with slightly newer mechanics. It's nothing to do with that. It is all about I, nostalgia. People, people have played... Just, I, no, people I, I, I disagree, because I, I was a Sega kid, the same as you were, Lou. And I like Nintendo. I don't modern have anything Nintendo. wrong. I don't have a problem with Sega at all. I, I've never... I mean, I never... I didn't have one as a kid, but I've got one now, and, you know... I play them occasionally, Mega Drives and that. Um, Nintendo. I'm not. I'm not exactly a Nintendo fanboy either. I don't. I wouldn't. I don't think I come across like, oh, Nintendo, are amazing. No, you know, I, I'm not. I, it's not the same thing. But the the games are fun. They're fun to play. As even as an adult, if you say they're aimed at children, now the story is aimed at children, or it's aimed at families, and the um, the the get like for example in. Um, Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario Galaxy, maybe even, actually maybe just in two. I can't remember if it does it in one. But there's a Luma, which is like a star, and he's stood on the bridge of your ship, which happens to be your face, by the way. The, sh the ship in, in Super Mario Galaxy Two is Mario's yeah, face. Yeah. Um, which it's I thought not was very brilliant. egotistical, is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, uh, the, uh, this Luma occasionally tells you that you've been playing too long, and again, that's that's that. I mean, that's a PC thing that I, you know political correctness bollocks that I want to keep away from, but that is the bit that's aimed at children. The story itself, I don't give a crap about the Mario story. Nobody cares what the Mario story is, and everybody knows what the Mario story is, even if you've never played it. Princess has been captured by Bowser or some variation of Bowser. Wowser or Zowser. Bowser. Or Krauser. <laughs> Bowser's um, a dog. What was um, what was the other one? <laughs> Wario. That was it. Wario. Yeah. I never Wario's played evil Mario. Yeah. I never played any of those Wario games. Um, but anyway, the, the the story's all the same. But every single one of the games that I've played, and I'm talking Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers Two, Super Mario Brothers Three, Super Mario World, Super Mario Sixty Four, Galaxies One and Two, Sunshine. Uh, I haven't played Sunshine. I do want to play it. And I'm saying Sunshine was. Quite fun. Same with Luigi Mansion. Luigi's Mansion. I want to give that a go at some point as well. But all of those games are categorically different. Now I know you're going to start going on about Mario Two being nicked off a, a game called Yamu Yumi Yoshi or whatever. No, it, a no. lot of the games are taken from other ideas, 
But not really. The gameplay is totally different in each one of them. I don't think it is. I mean, the the, the last game that I played on Nintendo was actually at Steve's, and it was um, Paper Mario, I think. No, it was um, new Super concept. Mario Bros. It's the right. new Super Mario Bros. where you could play four player on the same screen. Yeah, I'm not play now, yet. I've got them both downstairs. I, I'm going to admit I enjoyed it, but I enjoyed it because it's the, probably the first proper Mario game that I sat down and played. But was it that much different from the original Mario oh, that, games? That, look, there are games that are similar, and if it's the new Super Mario Brothers, yes, it's going to be similar to the original Super Mario Brothers. But don't Nintendo have a few a right. few categories that they do? They'll do they'll do like um they'll do a Mario Kart that they'll just re-release with new graphics and some new features, but it's still they do an iterative thing where every yeah. few years they release the same game with a few bones. So, sort of FIFA, sort of Call of Duty. Yeah, they do. Of, and they're, they're shit games and as well. I agree there. I agree there. I but agree Nintendo's whole business is based on that. That is an annoyance, but they've, they've been based on that forever. IPs, basically. Uh, in, intellectual property. That's what their, their thing is, and that's what all AAAs strive for. I was reading an article the other day about Watch Dogs being the fastest selling game ever or something ridiculous. Uh, and and it's the, it's broken loads of records already, but everybody I've spoken to hates it. But because that was successful, what they're going to do is they're going to release a second game, they're going to take the code from the first game, and they're going to go, right, here we go, now make it better, developers. Take another five years over making it better or another year, and I hope they don't churn one out every year like they do with Assassin's Creed, but they probably will. But anyway, um, we were getting a bit off track there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> I understand. I understand that, that there's a lot of an annoyance annoyances there. I have to categorically disagree with you when it comes to Nintendo. When it comes to any, it's like Microsoft haters. I don't get along with people who categorically hate Microsoft just because they are Microsoft. You know. Oh, I agree. And that, to me, even though you're saying that basically they they work via IPs, it's you know sorry they they they. Their business model is is around intellectual. That all are intellectual properties. I, I don't. I, everyone does it. So why is that a bit negative point with with Nintendo specifically? Because if we, all right to, to kind of close it, it just feels to me like Nintendo do it more. Like their entire business model is based on standing on the shoulders of their previous giants. There's a lot of resting and laurels going on at Nintendo. But you know, they to still me. They still sell more copies of games and more consoles than any other console on they the do, market. They do because because they've got a winning formula that they don't change much. But it's been working for them, and and people like me who have said I was a Nintendo kid, but I still wouldn't consider myself a major fanboy now. But I'd still stand up for them, in terms of the games are good. I never I've, I can't think of a single bug that I've experienced apart from like the early Super Mario Brothers games, which was full of them, but they were quite fun to. But it's, yeah, but if you're not going to innovate that much, then you're not going to introduce many bugs. If you've the, already the, worked out... Just, how you could before. you say they aren't innovating? I'm not, I'm not saying they're not innovating, but they're in not the innovating in bugs. No, they're not. Yes, they are. They are the number yeah, one the, innovators. If we talk about innovation... makers. Uh, but, but how, oh, right, okay, gimmick makers, whatever. We they, they are the, Yeah. And then, yep. then PlayStation decided to take the idea. Exactly, and right. it, it didn't work for any of and them, then, really. And then, yes, it has. It's incorporated into the PlayStation 4. It's got that sensor pad where you can tell what the orientation don't is. Don't argue consoles with people who own consoles, Lou. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, though, no, the, uh, Nintendo have categorically, throughout history, innovated with their hardware and, uh, I'd say, their software. I'd, I'd say that they innovated with it. Uh, you've died mic-wise, by the way. Have I? Uh, I, you've gone. You come back now. I, thought, I didn't hear you then for a second. Um, yeah, but they, they, they've categorically invented loads of stuff, and other people have, have rode on the coattails. That other people have done it much, much better and implemented better ideas than them. Like, for example, the Connect is like an offshoot of the Wiimote. It's that's where it kind of the, the the where it came from. No, the Wiimote was about. You've gone again, Matt. You've gone again. No, I just haven't said anything. I All don't right. like. I don't like any of those gimmicks anyway. Well, no, no, you don't. But families do. People who play games together in the front room do. That's what those <laughs> are for, and that's why the Wii is the biggest selling console ever. Something like 155 million units, or something ridiculous. It might be more than that, probably more than that. But I just, I know that it's, and I was shocked when I heard that as well. But I'm we're not talking, shocked. I'm, I was utterly shocked. But well, it came, wasn't it only 150 pounds when it came out or something, compared to double the cost for the other consoles? 
that's got to have something to do with it as well. Well, yeah, but that's again, Nintendo put a console together that was that could cope with the games that they were going to release on it. You know, they, they didn't they didn't go mental with oh we're the most powerful console out there. Like the PS3 said it was the most powerful processor yeah. ever, and nobody, not one, in fact, <laughs> no, there was a few developers that took advantage of that cell processor. Nobody else did. Everyone was like, what do we do with it? It's just going to take us an extra ten years. Let's not do it on PS3. <laughs> Anyway, yes. I think we've established that I don't like Nintendo. That's that's point number two, by the way, and we are over <laughs> an hour into the show. <laughs> Should right. we uh, move on to something else? Steve, yeah. go on, you can choose something, because me and Lou have both had a couple of rants. Right. Um, let's have a look. Uh, first one on my list is uh, the inability to bind custom keys in games. This is so <laughs> frustrating. Now, I'm a righty anyway, so it doesn't affect me as much as Lou. But playing certain games, the likes of... Um, like Civilization or something where it forces you to use the cursor keys. Now, force me to use the cursor keys means I've got both my hands on the right-hand side of my body, because that's where my mouse is. And there's no function in there to allow you to rebind them keys. Mm. Mm. I, I hate that. From my experience, I used to be a... Uh, when I used to play Quake years ago, and I only changed recently because of um, doing game development, I always used to um, strafe with my mouse buttons, so... That'd be left strafe. That'd be right strafe. Nobody else, I think, nobody else on that the planet weird. ever did that. And I, I loved it for years, but because I've been forced into playing with WASD as the movement keys via things like Unity, for example, when I'm doing game development, I have to use WASD. There's no way to rebind them for that. I kind of got used to it, so now I rebound everything to that's fire and that's zoom or whatever, you know. But I don't, still don't like it. I don't like the fact that when I fire with my left, my left index finger, my left. No, my right, <laughs> my right index finger. Um, when I fire with it, it moves my mouse slightly. When I fire, it's not as accurate as it used to be. When I used to fire with D and jump with A, and that's I know it's the weirdest config. So it's basically the strafe button swapped around with the jump and jump and fire buttons. The um, Steve has briefly mentioned there that I I'm not a lefty. I I'm not left-handed, but I do play games left-handed, so I play on the cursors. Lou plays games like that. Every time yeah. I go, every time I see him at a LAN party, he's, he's this is how he's sat, and I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it comes from I had a desk which was only the width of the keyboard, so I had to put the mouse in a certain place, and the cables wouldn't reach, so I had to put the case in a certain place, and basically I ended up having to play left-handed. Right. So I got used to playing left-handed, um, and I'm fine with that. And for a long time in gaming, it's been absolutely fine. You could bind every key in a game; there was no problems. Recently, games have started to say, right, okay, certain keys, like enter, like control, we're not going to let you bind. You're not allowed to bind certain things on the keypad. Hmm. Now, I use the keypad. I actually jump on the keypad, keypad zero button with my little finger. I see Steve trying it now, but it's... That's it, just it, wrong. I, I do it in a certain way. He looks really weird when he's playing as well. He's yeah, like, yeah, I, I have his, my his thumb. He's like got like, like a claw. Jeremy Beadle thing yeah, going on. I have, I have my thumb <laughs> on the down arrow, and then my other finger's on the other cursor, so I have a finger on every key. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> but the, the point is, the point I'm trying to make is that um, certain games, especially recently, have stopped allowing me to bind crucial keys... And also, there have been certain games. Battlefield 3 is an absolute bitch for this. I've decided that you can bind keys, but at certain quick time events, those keys will be back to the defaults, the hard coded. So you, at one point in the, at the very start of the game, you're walking through, um, you're walking through a train, and you've got a, there's a gun stuck in a door that's blocking the door. To remove that, you've got to press use. No, you don't. Hmm. You've got to press E. Now, E is on the other side of the keyboard from where my hands are. So I'm trying to use it. It's not telling me that I'm going to press E. And it, I'm, I'm like, okay, I can't get through the first door in this game. I have a suggestion for uh, developers. Um, for their Q&A team, when you hire your Q&A team, hire... Hire me. Hire Lou, <laughs> for one. But not honestly, hire people with distinct, different ways of testing. Not people that are going to follow your exact testing rules. Every, people who do test things in different ways and people who have different key combinations and, and that kind of thing. Don't just add it in because it's really difficult to test a game or play a game. I couldn't play with the, the arrow keys now, you know. I wouldn't be able to function properly in a game. So you need some like left-handed people, right-handed people, blind people, people who are, you know, who want to play the game with their feet, whatever. People who are different. 
and I think yeah, that's I the key. Yeah, I totally agree. I, at least, at least tr test the game out with people who are left-handed, so they've got a different control scheme. This is assumed that everyone uses WSD now, and not everyone does. No, in definitely fact, not. Only in fact, only on um, English keyboard layouts is that even vaguely acceptable. On French keyboards, they have um, a different layout entirely, um, and they can't use WSD. Yeah, I, I, when I played Skyrim, I know I've talked about the UI on that being terrible, which is another one of my bugbears. Um, uh, but the I couldn't bind. That's actually probably the first time when Skyrim came out. I couldn't bind my, my mouse bit keys, and that's I probably the first time that I tried yeah. WASD properly. Skyrim won't let me bind Enter still. Yeah. So I can't. I can't. Now, um, that can't use the Enter. Neatly onto my other bugbear of. Um, UIs, but specifically UIs that have been designed for consoles and been ported to ported to um, PC badly. Now, I said Skyrim was bad for that. There's, in fact, there's a number of other other games that I could I could go on about that that were uh, there was something recently that I played that um, I can't remember what it was now, but it, again it was a console release. Oh, that was it. It was Rainbow Six again. The UI for that you couldn't even. You, you had to create a character before you could bind your keys in that yeah. game, which I've never seen before. You always have to click new game and then you... Before you could even set your video settings. Yeah. Like, the very first thing you had to do was pick a character's name and give it a care colour and stuff. And one thing one thing we wanted to do was record right from the beginning and see the character creation set up and stuff, but it just couldn't work in the end, so we ended up just setting it up and configuring our video properly and then... <laughs> Watch it break. And then spending about two separate hour uh, occasion, like trying to record footage and badly doing it anyway. Yeah. Uh, but yes, binding keys and bad UI ports. Uh, I mean, especially on PC. I mean, it's not. There's no excuse. You've got no. more control accessibility on a PC than you have on any console ever will do. You know, even when they've got all these extra, you know, wave your hand around with the connect and stuff stuff. Is that the reason, though? Um, are we getting less freedom to bind keys because games are developed more with the console in mind? Yeah, of course they are. They develop the console first. They have to be because those are the less powerful machines. And quite often they port out, they, they, put, they farm out rather the porting to other companies. They don't do it in house, so who have to few. release within a very short deadline as yeah. well. And again, so it's same, like, same applies to normal release schedules. You have to release on this date. That's why we're getting pre-alphas. That's why we're getting alphas like that should that are con considered full builds that we're getting, you know, updates for later. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, next, next, because we, we're we're taking up a lot of time with this wind. Should we get one of? Yeah, I knew we would. Can we pick one of Sam's? Yeah. yeah. Um, I what. It's kind of, uh, there's, there's more to this that I'd like to say, but Sam's put down, being asked, would you like to switch to easy mode after fi dying a few times? Ah, I've got that on mine as well. I've got that in a different way. Which yeah, game? I've never list. played a game that does that. Is there a game in specific that does I that? I think Mass Effect does it. Yeah. Alright, oh, I haven't right. played that. Am I right? Uh, Steve, is that, yeah, yeah, Mass Effect one? definitely does it. Uh, um, I, the Witcher does it as well. There's any amount of games, in fact, there's probably more. I think this, this this kind of comes into the patronising gameplay, yeah. tutorials that are bad or tutorials that are forced on you. That all of this kind of it's it's all melded into one to me. It's just a one big annoyance. Most of the games that do one of them do all of this, and it's yeah. like they've employed an accessibility sub um, pro, uh, professional. That's it. <laughs> Fucking words today, honestly. Uh, they've, they've employed this guy to come in and go, right, actually, we need some... Uh, that needs to be inverted in colours, and uh, uh, that needs... Uh, that needs a, a... Well, I'll tell you what, I've died four times here, so maybe maybe you'd let me change it to easy. Maybe maybe pop up to easy to do that in it. You can just throw that in. There are games that have uh, that, that dynamically scale the difficulty, and they do it without you look knowing. They don't say, oh, you're shit. Can we make it easy for you? They'll just actually make the enemies less aggressive. That's even worse. I, I think that's all right. No. I think if it's done behind ah, the scenes, it no. is patronising. No, no. Yeah, but no, if you no. don't know, if you don't know you're being patronised, then you're not getting patronised. Uh, well, uh, no, but imagine. Auto scaling difficulty for me is fine. That's ex no, I disagree entirely. Uh, that if they, if if <laughs> I want the game to be easier, I will either restart it 
on easy or I will change the difficulty to easy if I can within the settings. Well, I, and yeah, I do that's... do that. I do. I hold my hands up. I do occasionally change it because I said I start all my games on the hardest difficulty I can. Because right. I'm a dick. This, this is where I differ. And this is one of my bugbears, and that, that's I think something Steve's got as well, which is difficulty for difficulty's sake. Now I think that all games should be played on normal. Yeah. I think the games should be played the way that they were designed. They shouldn't be artificially made harder or easier. Right. Now, let me just let me just interject. That Rainbow Six game that we played, we played that on normal. We should have been playing that on realistic, really. Because I, I played it through on realistic myself, and I tell you, I didn't find it a challenge when we were playing it at all. And the fact that you were running off uh, in front of me, shooting everybody in the room before I even had a chance to set the AI up or consider what was going on in that room. You'd, <laughs> fin you'd, you'd nailed everybody. It's like, no, that isn't how this game plays. That isn't right. And we should have been playing that on realistic one Sorry, I'll dead. stop killing people, shall I? No, no, but I'm saying that that's the point. Is it's, not, it's no fun if the mechanic of the game is to set the room, you know, set up your entry to the room yeah. and then do it and then all go, right, let's kill it. And there's still a, po a chance you can die doing that if you do the things in the wrong order. But the, you've, we've kind of broken the mechanic of the game by putting it on easy or normal because we've, we can take like six shots instead of one, you know? It depends on what the game was designed for. I mean, I, I've put one, a, one exception to this that I can think of, and that's the Halo series, which is meant to be played on, on Legendary. Ostensibly, that series is meant to be played on the hardest difficulty because that's where the AI is the most effective and the damage is the most balanced. The whole game is just balanced on Legendary. I disagree. I played Halo 2 on Legendary. I played the first one Disagree on... with Lewis episode. Yes, it is. I dis I'm sorry. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh... Right, you're out. Out, Steve. That's a, da that's a dad joke. We're only oh, 30 come on. <laughs> Um... At Halo, I played the first Halo um, back in back in my heyday. Um, I think I must have played that on normal, maybe uh, going going against the fact that I say I play everything on hard. But I played the second on legendary, and I couldn't even get past the first one or two rooms or something. Because you played the first one on medium. Oh, it was. I'm, I, I was just getting so frustrated the fact that I was playing in FPS on a control pad as well. But that's just PC master race bollocks, isn't it? Um, but yeah, I don't. I I, I didn't. I, I didn't get along with that game at all. Especially, I mean. I'm sure I played the first one on hard at some point, and I'm sure I tried the. I got stuck at the flood level on hard, but that's I think not really I, hard level. It's just a boring level. Yeah, maybe I just maybe I just <laughs> yeah. got bored. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm Willow. Uh, every game that I play when I start off, I play it on normal because that's what I expect the game to have been designed around. Mm -hmm. That's like you know the level playing field. If you've then got to go in and change it up or down, then obviously that's just down to the individual's ability. What I don't like about hard is, sorry, just quickly. What I don't like about the idea of a hard difficulty is that it feels like it's just going to be normal difficulty with double the health on the enemies, yeah. or half the damage on your weapons. Uh, I think it can be done lazily, and I know where you're coming from there, because yeah, there's, there's, you can have like when you play Bioshock on harder, as we I said last time, you get less ammo. It's you yeah. get less money. It's harder to survive in that world. The same goes for any kind of survival game. There's, believe it or not, on that FTL that I was talking about, that faster than light. There's an. Uh, I played it on normal. There's no easy setting on it. I played it on normal and I still couldn't complete it when I cheated. But there's a, <laughs> there's a there's a hardest setting or a harder setting. And it, oh my god, I've never even tried it, but I don't imagine it's fun. <laughs> I mean, there are, there are um, XCOM, the new XCOM game, is, uh, a lot of people will only play that in Iron Man mode and classic difficulty. See, this is another one of your your things where you, you we talk, I'm a bit of a save whore. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't mind reloading. To, no, wouldn't you to... play games on hard? No, no, but that's You're a save scummer. Yeah, but I've always been, so that's my way of playing games. If I die, I mean, believe me, I, I want to get, like, Dragon, whatever it's called. Dragonfall, um, Shadowrun, Dragon, Dragonfall, that I'm playing at the moment. That's on. I'm playing that on the hardest setting I could choose. I think if if there is one, um, and it's really difficult. But I very rarely load because I've now got the hang of the mechanics. What I don't like is being punished early on in the game, like for example in XCOM, losing loads of troops and then going right. I'm going to have to restart now because now I know actually how to play it. I'm I, I I shouldn't have lost those guys that I lost. You know, that's what annoys me. So that's why I save scum. Yeah, I'd but shit happens. Yeah, I'd know, love but... to. I'd love to get you to play the original XCOM on Superhuman difficulty. Oh, I bet, just I just... watch you get wasted. <laughs> I bet yeah. I bet yeah. This the, would end up up your bum. The 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 AI in that game is terrifying. It's like you're playing against Julian Gollop himself. Like he connects to every game and controls them, and kicks you up the ass with them. 
It's they terrifying. Are. I don't know. I've I, I I said I've told you before the reason that I play things on hard. It's getting away from the annoyances a little bit. This, but the reason I play things on hard is, is that I'm only going to play them once these days. I didn't used to play on hard when I used to play things over and over and over, but now. I'm only getting one playthrough, and then that's it. It's it's shelved forever. That, pretty that's much. that's. I think that's a good reason. I think I think if there's any good reason to play on hard, that's a good one to, to make the game last. Especially if it's a great game. I kind of wish that I played Dishonored on the hardest setting because I found that an easy game, but it was such a great game that I wanted to last forever. Biggs has just brought a good point up in the chat. Um, I probably set difficulties to normal as well. When I get time to play games nowadays, I play more for the experience story rather than being challenged or frustrated. And that's yeah. uh, that's exactly me. I, I'd that's rather, me as well. I'd rather enjoy it. In fact, I don't even I avoid games with story these days because I'm so busy. I want I want games like Shovel Knight and I want games like um, Shadow Run Returns, even though that is chock a block with fucking story. Oh my god! I said there's more text in that than anything else I've ever seen. It's like bloody war and peace. It's um but it's still it it I don't know, I still it's still quick and easy for me to play it, you know, it's not it's not particularly difficult. There's a lot of stuff going on, but the way they present it, it isn't overbearing or anything like that, and that's what I like. Mm. Right. Um we've talked about churned out franchises and things like that slightly. Yeah, uh, I think we talked we've about covered... IPs and um one thing another thing Sam's put in his list is forced multiplayer. That's been shoehorned into games. I've not, I've not encountered any of this because I don't. Um, well, again, this is a console thing, isn't it? Mm, prob well, I don't know actually. It's Probably. Mass Effect Three and stuff, isn't it? I, that's well, a console sort of. Well, on a Mass Effect Three, in order to get um, the like one hundred percent galactic readiness, in order to get the good, good, good ending, you had to play it online. And you had to play yeah. so many matches and win so many matches. You could only get up to like eighty percent without it, couldn't you? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I didn't. I never played that online, so I only did the the good good ending or whatever. It is. I actually haven't completed Mass Effect Three because oh. I got to the point where I'd done everything apart from get the galactic readiness up, and I just never got round to playing the multiplayer bit. You, you're a completionist, though, aren't you? From what I can tell. Just, yeah. I, I am as well. I try and do everything I possibly can in the game. Again, and it's frustrating it's, as hell. Yeah, and then and then by the time I mean I, I can see why you stopped at that point, but I just went. You know what? I'm going to complete it. It's only it was only like one mission i think it's only a couple of hours after that part you know something like that but yeah 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 uh, that anyway so mass effect does this it shoehorns um multiplayer in there assassin's creed is very very guilty of that these days and it's not that fun either gta did it as well they started shoehorning um multiplayer in and as you said gta 5's multiplayer was kind of thrown in after the fact um well, not necessarily thrown in after the fact. It was meant to come out with it, and it was. I'm told it's a polished product, but it just wasn't released in time, and they they were fine with that. Sorry, I'm, I was just reading the notes on the on the forced multiplayer, but we just uh, Steve actually just brought up what's been written down here. So, um, no, yeah, it's. Um, I think maybe it is more of a console thing. Because I, I, I can't think, think of is. any. I can't think of any PC titles. I mean, um, they released um, multiplayer, a multiplayer patch for Deus Ex back in the day. I don't know if you remember it. Did you ever play it? Uh, no. It's just, it's just the original Deus Ex had multiplayer, and I played it for a little bit because I was like, "Oh my god, brilliant!" Yeah, I, I, I think Terrible. I might have installed it and maybe ran around one of the maps on my own, but it's just it doesn't work with the game mechanic. It's too fiddly. You know, you have to manually pick items up, you're not just running over them and them getting picked up or you haven't yeah. already got your load out or anything like that, you know um, but yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of multiplayer like that and I think it's getting more in there because people want that social aspect especially in the console market, people want to know that their friends are online and people want to arrange a, a, a weekly kind of multiplayer session with their mates <laughs> excuse me well, which is all fair and well but it shouldn't be forced no it's it's just there for the sake of it though. It's like oh right, we can't um, animate boobs on a woman, but we can make some multiplayer a crap multiplayer for Assassin's Creed. You know, it, it's like that. Boobs are multiplayer. Yeah, I mean obviously, obviously multiplayer. Obviously multiplayer. Yeah, of course. Obviously. <laughs> boobs. What? Uh, while we're on the subject of multiplayer, um, I, I asked this question to a guy at work today, and he brought up a load of things which were not on our list because we've spoken quite heavily on single player but just typical things in multiplayer games like pe pe snipers 
Hmm. Bloody, the 50% of the people who are 12 years old and just started playing the game, let's be a sniper. You know what, you know what, I don't care about snipers. And I'm not just, just trying to uh, upset you today, Lou, I promise it's not that. Yes, you are! <laughs> No, I, I don't care. I've never really been that bothered. Yeah, it's frustrating when you get AWP'd in the face from as soon as you spawn, but... Over and over and over. No, that's never happened to me. I've, it it happens to me. It's about... Play Battlefield 3, mate. You, it will happen to I, you I played, constantly. I've played more Battlefield 3 than you, motherfucker. Well, okay then, so it's <laughs> happened to you more than me then. No, it hasn't because I know how to play the fucking game. You obviously Woo! spawn and then run <laughs> into the, into the sniper. Oh, look, look, there's a shiny thing over there. So what you do is you spawn, you run in your camp. What me? Yeah, Chris yeah. is a sniper. That's what he. Is. No, no, yeah. I spent. I spent <laughs> all my time. in the bush. I spent all my time running around at the helicopter pad, <laughs> waiting for it to spawn. I don't running in zigzags. Yeah. Chris, Chris just attacks people with an exploding wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm a bit of a vehicle whore in Battlefield. I do like, especially. No like, wonder you don't get sniped. Well, I, I don't just play vehicles, but you know, I don't get sniped that often. I don't know. You have to. You have to take advantage of the cover and all kinds of stuff. I don't. I don't see that as a problem. Like camping, people always used to complain about camping when back when we played Quake and Tribes and all that. Camper, camper, fuck off. Fuck off, it doesn't matter. It's someone playing the game how they want to play. It's not illegal. It's not like it's a black magic. It's not like he's cheating or he's got punk bust, um, he's got a bot on or anything like that. He's just good at sniping and he's camping in a good sniper spot. Right? It was considered bad sportsmanship though, wasn't it? Fuck off. Just... I, I, yeah, I've, I've got to, I've, <laughs> in, a, in a strange way I've got to kind of agree with you, Chris, that people should be able to play a game however they want. And a cheap move is still a valid move. You know, the only the only time I, I think people should play how someone else tells them to play, and this is a bugbear that I've written down somewhere, is when you're playing clan games. If you play a clan game, and, and I'm specifically thinking of um, people who are independent in your clan that come along and they're a little bit like mercenaries and they never really get involved in the team, and there's a few names I can name from our history. Well, let's but, not. Yes, yeah, so I'm not going to. Um, but they, they just run off. And I'd spend the entire match typing, pressing Y, team chat, and then typing, fucking, fucking, you fucking, if you were there, I wouldn't be dead. I wouldn't be dead, you <laughs> Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I said the one, one of the Chris! words that we weren't supposed to say on the show. Chris, so. I'm telling you that. <laughs> I think it's because I'm getting so angry and frustrated. Well, not angry, but you I know did, what I mean. Well, I didn't want people to be a lot of hand flapping, a yes, lot of staring. Yes, sorry. Uh, Biggs has just highlighted. And a lot of high pitched voices, so we've, we've managed all three. Yes, yes. Yeah. Sorry about that, anyway, if anyone was offended. No, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not sorry. Yes, you are. I am a little bit. Right. I'm getting very hot and bothered, though. Yeah. Um. Can I bring one up? Because um, it's got a nice little story attached to it, and it'll, it won't be that long. Um, anecdote, anecdote. It's not an anecdote as such, but um, it's <laughs> <laughs> a little section before I do these things. Um, <laughs> I feel that a lot of the the big game developers are very scared of putting randomness into the game, allowing the game to to unfold naturally. Now, an example of this was um, it was the Elder Scrolls series and especially Oblivion. Now, before Oblivion came out, they were harping on quite a lot about the uh, Radiant AI, which is this system that in place whereby all the NPCs in the game and all of the monsters in the game had goals. They had hunger, they had tiredness, they they want to go to the shop and they'd want to walk back and it had jobs to do during the day. And it sounded great. The, the, basically, if, if a character got hungry, they would go and find somewhere to get food. They'd go and buy food if they had money. They'd try and steal it if they had no money and so on. So they had all this AI in place and they started testing the game and they found that there was all kinds of crazy stuff happening in the game. Um, and a good example here was that in one of the Dark Brotherhood quests, uh, there was this merchant who sells skooma, which is uh, the drug of the game. Um, and during testing, the NPC would be dead when the player got to them. <laughs> Every time they'd come up and this, this guy would be dead. And they were like, why is this guy always dead? Overtoast. No, no, it oh. turned out that all the um, NPCs from the local skooma den, all the drug addicts, were killing him to get the fix. Nice. <laughs> so they were killing him and stealing his skooma because um, he was the only guy who had it. 
and they couldn't fix these problems. They would, I wouldn't even call them problems, but they were, they were breaking the game. They would have towns overrun with wolves. The wolves would get hungry, come into the town, eat all of the NPCs, and take over the town. Mm. And so at the very, like, a few weeks before launch, they basically had to dial back this AI because the game was breaking constantly. The, the unexpected things are happening all the time. And it's a real shame to me that that was where they had to go with it. That they couldn't, I, I, I could not understand that, though, because that stops. I can understand it, I can understand it, but it's, I just feel like it's such a shame that a game that could potentially really surprise you ended up being dialed back to the point where none of this stuff ever happened because they couldn't, they, they couldn't, they couldn't trust the game just to pro provide emergent experiences. They want to control over it. Hmm. And that I is think a, it would have made it better. I think, I think if they, if they hadn't dialed it down to the point where they basically anesthetized the entire thing, there was hardly any um, evidence that it even existed in the game. Because if you think of Oblivion, do you really think of the AI? No, not, really. not, not in Oblivion, no. no it's, they, they did improve it for Skyrim, but Oblivion, they basically at the last minute dialed it right down, so it's pretty much not there. And it's a shame, because you could... It, if it was just maybe just a little bit in the game, you can imagine there'd be, there'd be situations popping up all the time that'd be really interesting. So that's, it just seems to me that when the publisher says, here's the game that we want, and we're going to give you so much budget to do it, and we wanted to do this and this and this, and we wanted to play like this game and this game, it's such a shame that the developers don't have the balls to be able to put in more emergent stuff. And the only emergent stuff that seems to get in the games is the stuff that's a bug. Which normally they, they go, go back, oh yeah, we meant to put that in. Oh, we fix it. Oh, they yeah. fix it because it's oh, such oh, a oh, massive hole. Bunny, yeah. and the amount of games, um, especially Half-Life Engine games, that Valve basically patched the bunny hopping out. Um, Team Fortress Classic, which Biggs used to play in uh, Counter-Strike. And people found a way around it, but still, I think that games need more entropy. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, especially in like the AAA titles, they all seem to fall within like a, a, like a set paradigm. It's a case of, right, this is what a first-person shooter is. You can't go outside these rules. Mm. This is how the game plays, and everyone seems to conform to it. There's, uh, like Lou said, there's not a lot of people that are willing to rock the boat. Yeah. That are willing to kind of well, think outside the box with it. It's all budget issues, though, isn't it, normally with um, big studios? Because they, they've, they've got to release a game at a certain time. They've got to make a certain amount so they can make the next one, or they can make another game out of the side of the IP. And they, 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 there's a lot of higher management that don't care about the actual game, they don't care about they, they might they might be really excited that it's great and it, everyone loves it, but that's about it, you know? Well, look at Halo, for example, when that was first uh, developed, that was an RTS, wasn't it? It was, yeah. It was going to be a, a... I think it was going to be a, a third-person RTS of some variety or something like that. It was going to be third-person, definitely. Yeah. And then Microsoft bought Bungie and made them turn it into an FPS. I still think there's a lot of innovation in Halo, though. The physics and the um, there was yeah the the feel of the game was very different from other um, FPS games at Actually, the time. You know what? I mean, I, it's Halo is touted as as like a, a favourite by a lot of people in terms of their FPSs. And equally hated by a lot of people who consider I, themselves FPS connoisseurs. I, I am a hater. I I, I love I it. Lo I loved playing the single player, but when it comes to the multiplayer, again restricted by c console um, control pad, didn't like that for one. Two. I, I, I just didn't see anything new there. I mean, fair enough, those um, plasma grenades were a lot of fun to play around with, but that, that was literally about it for me, and then the sword fights occasionally were a bit fun, but... The, the vehicles uh, were fantastic in the Halo series and multiplayer. The vehicles were innov innovative back then, because again, that was one of the first games with vehicles that worked well. You know, you didn't fall through the floor or fly off into the distance when you're working with them. But yeah, it's... Um, I don't know, there's something about the Halo series that, that really doesn't inspire me that much. There's, it's not that interesting. Uh, I quite enjoy the uh, the backstory to Halo. It has got a lot of story and it's quite in-depth. There's a series of novels getting made about it. There's been short movies, you know, B-movies made about it, animations. It is quite an involved uh, universe. Hmm. And they just ruined it by making more games. Yeah. Halo 3, Halo 4... I'll be honest, I've stopped at Halo 3, and I don't know if I've even played that. I've got it, but I haven't done it. I've, I've completed it. Halo 3, that was the last Halo game I played, and I tried Reach and other ones, and I didn't like them. Mm. Um, just in principle, when I started playing them, I just didn't get, I didn't feel them. I wasn't feeling the love. Um, 
move on to one other bugbear that both Sam and I have, uh, and again, I'm not sure you guys will be on the same page with this one, but um, open worlds that don't need to be open worlds. Now, I'm talking about specifically an example is L.A. Noire, where the game mechanics are really interesting. The facial recognition, sorry, the facial capture and animation is was astounding for the time. Still and is, I think, isn't it? Still looks okay, but it, it's, you know, there's something about it, it's not as good as some of the more modern ones. Um, anyway, so it, it's it's got this great story in it. Um, there's lo there's not very many side missions in it at all. The, it's mainly story, but there's a lot of them, and it's a lot of repetition. But the world, there's, it's completely superfluous. It, it's not needed. We, th there's no, Honestly, if you go off the beaten track, you can't go and hunt down a criminal or sometimes you you find something to do but it's not there's there's nothing there and it's it's huge it's a humongous map i don't i don't know in terms of like gta if it's bigger or smaller or whatnot but it there's something about it it's just there's no need for it and I, again we look back at the assassin's creed games it doesn't need to be as big as it is there's so much effort and resource put into these games that eight square miles in la noir yeah, apparently. Is that that's got to be bigger than GTA Three uh, and possibly Four? Um, I'm, but yeah, I'm it's um, I, the, Grand Theft Auto Five's map was half the size of LA Noir's, five? and that's a big yeah. So you that's see what five. I'm talking about? <laughs> the, the fact that that game, honestly, if you can get hold of a copy um, cheap, get hold of it. I think you might be able to get it on. Oh no, I think it's just PlayStation. But anyway, it's it's not a particularly interesting world. There's not really much going on in it, you know. I mean, there's a few set pieces that are interesting, but yeah, and I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I'm not that keen. But there's a, there's a few other games like that that have just got massive worlds for the sake of it. And I would even well, go, I would even go into the Skyrims and the Oblivions. It's like, do we need that much space? Skyrim is quite. Uh, Skyrim's is quite. Um... Populated. There's quite a lot. It's of stuff not only quite populated, but it's actually not as big as it seems. You can walk quite quickly to the next town mm. it look you look at the size of the map and you see a big mountain and where you think oh christ that's gonna take me like half an hour to get round and you can actually go there in five minutes it's the, the world's compressed yeah no I, I said it doesn't it didn't feel like that in skyrim but it did feel like that in morrowind to me and when we go back to daggerfall you were talking about that daggerfall's got the big yeah it's got the biggest map of any game ever it's ridiculous is it procedural it's not procedural. Basically, there's loads of towns, and then the the, the the stuff between the towns is just random wilderness. So, so it's kind of procedural. It's basically completely flat, green with trees on it, until you get to the next town. Yeah, and that that again is. I mean, although it was impressive for the day, it's still like do we need? There's, still, we there's, need that, you there's know? tens of thousands of towns, I think, or there's thou at least thousands of towns and cities and so stuff. What? But why did they do that for Daggerfall and then go back on themselves the rest of the games? Because because it was very simply generated. Each city was basically made out of blocks and you basically had the same houses with different textures on them. There was like five or... T well, not five or ten, but there was there was only maybe a couple of hundred at most different blocks that made up every city in the game. Mm. So they just uh, randomly construct them. Or not randomly, they probably generated it when, and then saved it on the disc. So it was always the same for people. But But yeah, it's... When it comes to actually creating something like Morrowind, where you've got to craft the whole world and not just the cities in between all the wilderness, then it becomes a much bigger challenge. Mm, yeah, exactly. Even when they use um, <coughs> use techniques like kits, putting together kits for the uh, for each prefab or each type of area, like they've got a yeah. dungeon kit or a housing kit or things like that. Um, mm. But yeah, um, the, the, another example or example of a, a large game, open world game that. Is done well in my opinion is World of Warcraft, Warcraft, because that's got distinct areas for each, you know, level cap or level group, and yeah. then in those areas there's distinct areas with different enemies and bosses in them, and it's interesting to find which ones are relevant. I agree with that, and that's handcrafted. Though. That's very much handcrafted. I think Oblivion is kind of, not Oblivion, sorry, Skyrim is sort of semi-procedural in how it was originally designed and then it was finessed by hand mm, yeah whereas world of warcraft i think was almost entirely handmade and every zone has it follows that um mmo tradition of every zone being very different and i love that i think the world of um i know we're, go we're going back on the levels here a little bit but the world of everquest was beautiful for that reason because every single zone was 
designed by hand and not yeah. designed with the people designed it knowing fully what they were doing. But let's not yeah, go yeah. too far into that. That's said, that. That is a bugbear of mine. I mean, when you there is only really <laughs> L.A. Noir and Assassin's Creed that I can I can quote uh, off the top of my head, but I'm sure there's plenty of other games that are, are similar to that. Where they put too much effort in just because they think that gamers want a, a, a bigger world. It's 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 Assassin's Creed 2, therefore the game must be bigger. This game now has 5,000 kilometres squared. Brilliant. Yeah. But is there yeah. anything interesting in those 5,000 kilometres squared? It was like the, um, the Mass Effect levels I mentioned a few episodes ago. <clears throat> we were in the Mako. Just a massive open area that you've just got to drive around the whole thing to try and collect... Um, like minerals or yeah, yeah. I remember it's that, false yeah. economy, yeah. isn't it? It's, it's saying it is oh, because we've got this giant world that isn't yeah. got anything in it. This game will take you a hundred hours to complete. Yeah, but you're going to be driving around nowhere for ninety of them hours. Yeah. yeah. Balls. Hmm. I think that the, the, there's um, I mean, I guess this is a bugbear of mine actually, and that's the the um the trend towards procedural games. Now, don't get me wrong, I think procedural could be brilliant. Um, I love procedural, but I think some developers have started to take the piss a bit with it um, by saying they've got this world like uh, I think it was the um, the No Man's Sky thing which looks beautiful the, 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 the trailer for No Man's Sky looks unbelievable but I get the distinct impression that that game is going to be lots and lots of what you've already seen in the trailers just uh, with different colours yes and no I think they have uh, that trailer was procedurally generated yeah it was but, but they, that, they did I think quite it was, a lot that trailer was shot they also did a lot of tweaking to it to make it more realistic, like or more uh, presentable. Sorry. Yeah, so they're going to pick the best bits out of it, which is what you would do with the trailer. But I think it's almost like a, a poor movie with a good trailer in that they'll pick out all the best bits because that's all there really is to it. Mm. Those bits for, with lots of filler, but and that's where a lot of procedural games are going to go. I've also read a lot about uh, No Man's Sky, um, saying that they've got a lot of other things to do in the worlds as well. And there's going to be missions and things like that. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that it's going to be in, at least interesting to play. Please, please be good because it looks amazing. But, but you know what? I procedural. The last game that I was excited about, it was a major disappointment to everybody that played it, and that, that was Watch Dogs specifically. I was really, really excited for that game, and then yeah, I heard. I, I mean, I'm glad I never got it. I'm, I'm glad I didn't buy it. I didn't buy it because I thought, well, I don't really want to be influenced by it while I'm doing my game, and I can wait. You know, I'm not that excited about it. I can wait until it's gone down in price a bit. There's um, someone's released a mod for the PC version of Grand Theft Auto 4, which basically turns it into Watch Dogs. Yeah. It's got hacking. It's got the city. It's got the character. You can put your little mask on and everything. Just be, it's just been announced today, I think. So uh, it's it is pathetic how these big studios are getting away with this, though. Because I imagine again, I imagine that Chicago in um, Watch Dogs is. It'll, it'll have some artistic license in it, and it will be there'll be areas of it that are larger than they need to be, you know. And mm. I don't know. I don't know that. I haven't played the game, so I couldn't tell you. Yeah, I mean, the, the divide looks like it might be quite division. accurate. Division, sorry, division. Tom Clancy's is a division. That looks like it might be quite accurate. Yeah. But yeah, that's going off subject again. Um, one quick one I want to mention: um, not being able to fall off edges. <laughs> <laughs> now there's there's only one game there's only one game that I can quote on this and this is GoldenEye on the N64. I don't know if the source version of GoldenEye was different, but there were certain levels and I think it might have been the facility possibly, but there was um, there was platforms around some of the corners of some of the uh, rooms that you could run into, and you could go up a up a ramp and then go along these platforms, but you couldn't fall off these platforms, and it was like. You know, it was like head height. You could jump off as a real person. It was, you know, and and you couldn't drop off, and that really, really annoyed me back in the day. Was that was that a conscious decision done to um, improve the to, to to reduce the verticality of the gameplay because you're on a pad? Do you uh, think? I have no... So you couldn't jump on top of people's heads and stuff. I I, I don't see that why. Makes sense. I don't see why they would want that would be a benefit though. Well, on a pad, it's harder to look up and down. Yeah, but well, on it's pad also harder to look left and right. Well, it is, but it's not as high. Having you can also strafe left and right. Yeah, you you reducing one of the, no, you the strafe with, degrees you strafe of freedom. The, you strafe with one of the. Pad I think that's that's things, that, that, that's maybe why because I, I there's no physical reason why that would be a need. 
Because it was a proper 3D game. It wasn't like Doom or anything where I, I, you actually couldn't walk over the top of people because they were infinitely high. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I, understand, I understand that if it's a technical limitation. I don't think it was though. But I, I don't think it was. I think it was. It must have been a design decision because when Goldeneye came out, Quake, Quake Two, Tribes, yeah, it, all of those games had already been. Maybe, out. maybe the game testers were kept walking off the edges and they said, "Right, we're going to fix that." And it goes back to what we. Yeah, it goes back to what we were saying. The game testers are overly, overly draconian about ah. what they. Biggs has just said no falling physics too much for an N64. Well, uh, yeah, there was falling. I don't, I don't know. I think falling, I, 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 <laughs> falling you know physics what? is. Going the, down until they hit the floor. The first thing Mario 64 had fallen physics. Yeah, was, I don't think it was that. I don't that think, was I after think... that. Oh no, it was before it, wasn't it? Yeah, it was one of the first games that came out on it, wasn't um, it? And also, as well, the first thing that you do in that game, in GoldenEye 64, is jump off a fucking dam. Yeah, but that's a cutscene, isn't I it? I know that's it is, but no come on. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that brings swearing. me on another, no, uh, no. another bugbear. Which, uh, if I can find it. Um... It's the uh, inconsistencies, lack of continuity in games between cutscenes and what you can actually physically do in the game. Yeah, um, Sam's got that as well. For <coughs> yeah. it used I, to be a, a few things spring to mind. Um, Juice X being one of them. Deus X, sorry. Deus, Deus. 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 Deus X. Deus X being one of them. And it was um, one of the latest ones, which was. Uh, let me Human check. Revolution? Uh, Human Revolution, yeah. You could get an ability that would allow you to basically punch through a wall. Yeah. But you couldn't get through a locked door. Punch <laughs> through a concrete wall, can't get through a plywood door. Was it only certain walls as well? Yeah. Yeah, it was ones that had a big, <laughs> big punch button. sign on them. <laughs> yeah. But other things, uh, I mean, any amount of games, um, like The Witcher that I've been playing recently, you get a power called um, an Ard. Which is basically like um, I don't know, it's like a like a shock wave that you fire out. An ARD. Uh, ARD, I think it's called. Oh right, right. Um, and there's a certain point in the game, it's like, oh, you've got to use your ARD and do this, and you, you move rubble. But then you come to the exact same kind of model for the rubble in a different chasm, and you can't budget. Like, why uh, reduce that element, that mechanic, if you can if, if if you can only use it at certain predefined elements and uh, places uh, in the game? Sorry. Again, this is a resource problem, I think, with certain games. It's like when you talk about the Wolfenstein 3D um, laser cutter thing. You can only do that in certain places. It's a really cool mechanic, but it's like it doesn't. You you if you've got a laser cutter, you can surely cut through and most things, you know. This is a lightsaber issue, isn't it? The yeah, lightsaber yeah. can chop yeah, through anything. Yeah, the same thing. <laughs> I, I have to forgive um, these that that particular bugbear, I think, in games because you have to restrict. As a developer, as well, I have to restrict my players from going certain places and doing certain things because of resources. Yeah, yeah, but there's... invisible walls, Chris. Uh, I'm not using invisible walls, actually. I'm there using are better brick, and... big brick walls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, there's better ways to do it. It just seems massively lazy. It's almost like I mean I think Red Faction did it quite well, didn't it? And that it was made brilliant. most most of the walls were destructible in Red Faction, but I, it didn't make it a very good game because basically it's like okay, I'll just tunnel away to the end of this level as well, and the next level, and the next level. It basically you could replace any mechanic in the game with tunnel through a wall. Yeah, yeah. And it quickly got old. It made the game superfluous, really. It was really cool, though. It was, it was a really cool. cool mechanic. I'm, I'm amazed that didn't um, resurface its head in, in other games. Uh, well, they made a few, didn't they? They made quite a few Red Faction games, I'm, all I'm, with the I same mean, mechanics. I mean, I'm amazed other um, developers didn't take it, take it on. Oh, Minecraft the way that... Notch did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the way that portal handles it is quite good, that you can only fire your portal onto certain surfaces, which obviously transpired to be the ones that have got the moon rock crushed moon up rock, in. Moon rock, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. That's an interesting way of doing it, not just to, like, you, or you can only shoot at the red things. I didn't even yeah. know that, you know, I, and that makes sense now, the end makes the end? sense. The oh, end? Bloody hell, Chris. I loved, you fired. I loved it. <laughs> oh. I absolutely loved it, but I didn't really figure what was going on. Maybe I did. It's one of those things. I don't retain this information in my head, though. Doesn't um, doesn't Cave Johnson talk about you yeah, and Rock for it or something? He was like, oh, when he's not the talking about lemons. Said, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's one of my book bears, anyway. Yeah. I think uh, we've, we've chucked our way through quite a lot we, of these th things. There's a lot of uh, mention of uh, difficult boss battles or, or shoe Cheap boss battles. Yeah, cheap yeah. boss battles. Or arena-based boss battles where you don't have enough ammo to to complete it. And you have to then end up 
punching them with your fists. You know, <laughs> where, where it's not, um, it's like where you're not, you're not, it's not like replenishing. Like some of the games, some of the games that you play, like, um, Borderlands, when you fight a boss and you're in an arena, there's there's other enemies spawning that you can kill quickly and then get pickups from them. Or yeah. there are pickups lying around. Or there's a vending machine at the back that you can go and buy things from if you really want it's, to. It's a design problem, isn't it? I mean, how do you, how do you give players ammo without it feeling like you're just letting them open crates? It's a difficult design decision when you think about it, especially if you're going to do it for multiple bosses. Then you've got the Deus Ex uh, Human Revolution bosses where you go into the boss room instead of that you know instead of that trope where you have all the, the room that's full of like all the best weapons and all the yeah. gren- all, load of grenades and loads of upgrades before you go into that you actually go into the boss rooms and then the room is full of like absolutely chock-a-block full of weapons and sh- and it's ridiculous again it's like it's even more unrealistic than having them outside in another that's room that's a trope though isn't it that's, that's a definite gaming trope that means Steve always pick up on it all I'm right we're in, we're in it. a huge room with a huge door and we've got a million crates full of all the ammo you could ever need and all the weapons that you may have missed what's going to happen next yeah yeah hmm <laughs> But I mean, so that is, is that, an, I mean, I'm trying to avoid that with my mechanics, but then again, there's no ammo in my game and there's no replenishment. It's all about puzzles, really, I suppose, and puzzles and stealth. It's a bit different from an FPS, so. Hmm. Um, oversimplification of control systems. And again, this is probably a console thing for me. Um, I look. Yeah, I, I, and again, I'm. I, as, even though I'm a fan of the series, I, I have a lot of problems with Assassin's Creed. A lot of problems, and this is this is one of them. The first game, the controls weren't great. Second game, third game, they really improved them. They got better and better and better. But they got to a point, like now, they're starting to have this... Uh, instead of having high and low profile modes, so you can hold a button down and you go into high profile and then hold another button down and you go into free running mode, that... Everything is now context sensitive, so when you run up to a wall, you'll do certain things. I can't, they're doing something new in Unity as well. I was reading an article on it the other day. Um, but even in Assassin's Creed 3, everything was simplified. You didn't have to hold the free run button anymore. It was, it was, you, you could just run into, you know, hold one button and you run into it. And it's like, to me, again, it's patronizing. It's, it's, I got used to the controls in the last game. Sometimes some of the things they've done have improved it, but not mo- not very often. It's always it's always making it more accessible and more convenient. Again, come back to convenient. Comes back to convenience. We're just getting old, I think, guys. The fact that we're whinging about convenience. <coughs> I don't think it's because we're getting I old. I, I think don't think it is either. What it is, it's that these game companies are trying to increase their market share. So what they're doing is they're trying to make the games more more appealing to the less hardcore gamers, so in which case they have to simplify them. Mm. Yeah. Because it's going to be instant gratification, hasn't it? There has to be. Do you not feel a little bit like we're getting something taken away from us as gamers, though? Do you not oh, feel, massively. Do you not feel yeah. a little bit like we, we're, yeah, getting, we're, we're, we're getting punished for being fans for so long? Yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're, what they're stealing from us is that whole learning process that is... Is is a joy. It's what makes you. It what in, it's what endears you to a game. If you're going to put the effort in to get good at a game, it, it makes you like that game. It makes you think that that game's really great because you spent so long on it. Yeah. And no, then you right. get the gratification. I mean, that's, that's why I love Quake too. It's not a brilliant game, but it is a game that rewards you for working really hard at it. And Supreme Commander does the same. I could I could enter a game. Um, I could enter a game world in Quake Two. Uh, uh, I could play Thresh, for example, you know? I'd get whooped because he's much better at the game than me, but there's no, there's nothing to say that he will win that game for definite because we're on a level playing field. It's well, just our skill and our, the amount of practice that we've put in that, that yeah. makes a difference. For, for those that don't know, Thresh was one of the best Quake players. Um, Doom, Quake, and Quake 2, and to a certain degree, Quake 3. Thresh was unique in that he was a thinker. He was basically a high-speed chess player Whatever game he played, it wasn't about his aim, it wasn't about his mastery of the game, it was about how well he outthought his opponents, and he used to use mind games on people, he'd do things like drop a piece of ammo into the water to make a plop sound, hmm. to make it think that someone's jumped in the water, uh, things like that, so that's that's Thresh's That's, that's interesting, I didn't know that, I, yeah, I've, I've seen quite a lot of his matches, but yeah, not... Clever player. Very. He, when you watch him from first person, he, he stumbles around like he's he's a noob at the game. But he's such a good thinker. 
that it, it completely blows everyone out of the water but because of it. But that's the thing. He's he's still using the same mechanics that everybody else has access yeah. to. That's the point, isn't it? It's it, mm. he's he's earned that. Yeah. If anything, he's at a disadvantage because he doesn't know the game as well as some people who he's playing. Mm. Yeah. And he's still able to beat them because he outthinks them. So that just shows you that the, there is so much latitude in just raw gameplay skill. Why do we need all of this superfluous bullshit that games because, throw in? Maybe because they have, like, I'm thinking again, compare modern shooters, so we're looking at Call of Duties again, to old shooters like Doom and Quake. You, the, the, it is more convenient, there's a lot more options, there's a lot more stuff that's going on. And I imagine they've been better QA'd, they've been better tested, most of them. I mean, some, some obviously we've already talked about some games that don't get to that point, but... Uh, Call of Duty, there's no major bugs in it from what I can tell, and it's a fun game to play. But every like it, everyone wants to play it in a different way, you know. I, I, it's, I think I'm losing myself a bit there. Well, we're near the end now, anyway. Yes, we are. We are. Um, Biggs has brought something up. Do you still um, speaking of learning quick in the amount of hours you put in? Do you all still set a computer at work with your fingers on WASD? Yes, I'm I sat with my fingers on WASD now. Yeah, I, I, when I'm my, my resting position is my <laughs> playing position on the cursors. Oh, we don't need <laughs> to see your fingers. <laughs> you do. The well, nice so, fingers. Yes, Biggs, we do. Yes, we all I'm, do. I said I'm doing and, it right now as well. And I still walk around new places and think, how can I jump up onto that thing there? Via a double jump or a circle jump off the top of that. You know, you know, right? Out of, <laughs> I'm going to ask you both a question now, and I'm I'm going to tell you what my answer is first. Um, what is the one thing from the computer world that you wish you could take outside into the real world? And mine is Control Z. I wish <clears> I could undo things in real life. God mod. <laughs> <laughs> Give all. Fucking <laughs> 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 crushed. Just everything fall on you. No, I meant specifically like Control Z for me. It's like so I can just undo what I've done last. Like especially um, Control F as well. I want to find things when I'm reading a book. It's like oh, I remember reading something about that. Oh, I fuck, I can't Kindle, find Chris. it. Hey, buy a Kindle. Oh well, uh, yeah. We've got one. <laughs> we'll never use it. So, I would so like to it, be but... able to upgrade my storage. Yeah. Bigger pockets, mate. That's what you need there. You need I'll a... Think more like... Oh, right, right. <laughs> I can't think of anything. All right, fair Probably enough. some kind of jumping. I'd probably like to be a double jump. I'd like to be able to find things at knee height. I think I think we start we start small here. Maybe single jump. Maybe that's where we go first. See if we can actually jump. We already do that. <laughs> and plus, in quick again, you can jump about oh. a height and a half of your character. Anyway, you can't you? Jump about your first person there. games that you can't jump in. Yeah, that's another annoyance. Like, like Rainbow Six we were playing the other day. Yeah. Just... They've replaced it with other things, haven't they? Rainbow Six, I think it's, um, like, you, you, it's, you use it to, uh, to like, take cover uh, against walls and stuff. Well, that's but... what you bound it to. But, yeah, there's, there's also the action button, which can make you jump through windows. and. Yeah. I think, if stuff. anything, that game could have done with some context-centered controls because there was a lot of stuff that seemed to be on many separate keys that could have been on one. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, again, it was re again, that's another example of control systems that that were written for consoles initially, I think. It worked really well on a pad. I didn't like the FPS aspect of it, but it worked really well on a pad controlling the um, units and things like that. And then when they've, they've ported it to the PC, which was released a month after, I believe, then they... It's just ruined it. It's just... It, there's so much to do. It's unbelievable, you know? Yeah. Um, right, cool. Any, any other honourable mentions before we uh, we close things down? Um, I think I've covered everything, really. Uh, oh, one more thing while we're on the subject of Rainbow Six. AI teammates. <laughs> or as I like to call them, dynamic obstacles. Dynamic Because they're basically, basically <laughs> they, they, they are just there to get in the way, to walk in front of people shooting at you, to walk in front of you when you're shooting at other people and then die right, and then end right. the mission. I have a different perspective on this, only because <laughs> I've seen how you treated the ones in, in Rainbow Six. You literally <laughs> ran into a room, fucking screaming your head off, smashed windows, started spraying bullets everywhere at people, and I'm still, like, going, right, uh, I need to put them in action mode. This is all reading the I'll cue them up at the door. Oh, fuck, Lou's already in there. <laughs> uh, 
I, I, and the fact is, is every time we were in a corridor and I was getting them ready and lining them up, you went and fucking stood where they were going to stand. So it's understanding it their mechanics as well. I know that they're AI and they're supposed to avoid you and that kind of thing, but you also need to learn each game that you play. And AI, learning the AI is part of that. Now, again, I think Sam <laughs> would bring up um, Last of Us here because he's mentioned it before. Um, I haven't played it, but I do really want to play it. I really but play Ellie... It Ellie in The Last of Us apparently is very, very, very good AI in terms of she doesn't um, she doesn't get in your way. She's always she, she's good at defending herself as well, and I she can't. is quite helpful. And helpful, places. yeah. And she, she'll pass you around more. She'll uh, most of the time she will stay out of the uh, well, stay out of trouble as much as possible and try and hide herself away from it. But there is still moments when she'll just run out in front of a zombie. Yeah. I suppose that's going to happen, though, isn't it? Nothing's yeah, perfect yeah. yet. Um, what about DLC? Oh, well, have we got have we got um, minus three minutes to talk about that? I don't think we do. I think <sighs> there could be an entire episode on DLC, though, couldn't there? Yeah, on we good could. DLC, on bad DLC, and and why I hate DLC in general. Just for right, me, guys, like DLC. Yeah, yeah. Right, I'm, I'm going to close the showdown, but I'm going to I'm going to leave this with a with a final thought. Stop pre-ordering your games. Stop downloading DLC entirely unless it is unless it's really worth it. If it's if it if you if it hasn't been released like a second after Borderlands you know, Two DLC is excellent. Okay, so let's I, let's said, not generalise here. No, but I'm saying generally, <laughs> <laughs> generally I disagree with DLC as a whole because it is you're supposed to be selling a game to us and you're we're spending sixty pounds a game usually. You know when it's. You know, resale AAA. You're spending sixty pound a game, and you, you then you want an extra six quid for the a couple of missions that you've missed out because you couldn't be asked, or you, or you didn't have time to release it before. The, you used to get it for free. We used to get we used to get um, expansion packs. That's what we paid for. We paid for expansion packs, which were considerable. DLC these days is one or two missions, a couple of extra guns. You know. It yeah. depends, not... depends on the DLC. Depends on the DLC. Let's let's be let's be fair about this. I, I, I am being fair and fuck DLC. <laughs> right. We okay. can have an episode on that. I'll let you. I'll let you choose that <laughs> whenever you want. Um, so yeah, stop stop pre-ordering. Stop downloading DLC. Stop paying to win. Stop paying to win. Stop playing mobile games in general, you okay. idiots. Always use protection. Don't do drugs. Do as many drugs as you want. Always use protection. Maybe sometimes. On your Sometimes. drugs, yeah. On your drugs. Use protection while taking drugs. Yes, and uh, and don't play Rainbow Six to, uh, Vegas Two with <laughs> Lou. <laughs> right. Anyway, everyone, thanks for um, thanks for the chat's been very busy today, and uh, thanks for everyone contributing. Uh, and we'll catch you next week. We'll uh, we'll be announcing what we'll talk about, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll have Sam back, who does actually add some class and um, insight Sam, into this. Sam is my. I, I'll tell you what. I watched the section on the exploding wheelchair from Sam's <laughs> from the last episode, not the last episode, the one before. It must have been about four or five or six times, and I've sent it to people. It's the best thing ever. It's the best thing on YouTube. Full stop. Go and watch <laughs> Cool Down episode three. <laughs> about halfway through, when Sam talks about the Metal Gear Solid Three, the end <laughs> wheelchair cutscene death, it is the funniest thing you will ever watch. Hopefully guaranteed. We'll be able to, hopefully, we'll be able to recreate that in some way when we do a playthrough. Anyway, uh, on Friday, me, me, Lou, and Steve, hopefully, we'll be playing Planet Explorers live. Yep. Yes, please. Don't yes. know if we'll get it on YouTube afterwards because we've had all kinds of nightmares trying to get. The I think it'd be fine recorded. with that because it's like a let's play, isn't it? Yeah, we'll see. Um, but yeah, thanks guys, and uh, we'll catch you next week. See you later. Thanks for tuning in.